I'm addicted to success. To success. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to your new favorite. I said you're new. Welcome to your favorite podcast, y'all. The Ain't Shit Show, the home of booze views and unpopular opinions. I want to thank you for joining us for episode 126. 126. My name is Fresh, and one half, I'm one half of the pod guys. And with me, I had the best man in all the podcast land. My right hand man, Mr. B. Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, B? Happy September. What's going on? Same old same. Just another day. Just another day in the quarantine. Just another quarantine. day in the quarantine. Not, not spectacular happening. How, how, how is, how is the game? You, I heard you talking about you been watching the, the, the playoffs and all that. How is that going? Oh, playoffs are great. Um, you know, it, they had a little pause and pause in the calls for, uh, the good brother in Wisconsin, but, um, it's back, you know. It's good games, you know what I'm saying? Like great players matching up, you know what I'm saying? It's a little different because it's the bubble, obviously, but mm-hmm. um, it's still dope because niggas is, I think, able to lock in even more so than they um, normally are. Mm-hmm. So um, without any distractions or whatever, but it's great. I love it. It's a good game coming on tonight that I'm trying to watch. Um, um, what ended up um, What ended up uh, breaking negotiations? I didn't even look into it and see what ended up happening. Um, B mentioned that they were um, protesting um, for uh, what's my guy name? Um, Jacob. Jacob. Right. Jacob. Yeah. Yeah, what what ended up happening with that? Like, what were their demands? Uh, I don't really know. Those weren't publicized. Okay. Um, but they just basically met, I guess. They initially met, um, you know, and it was a bunch of going going back and forth, apparently. And then, um, like, LeBron and uh, first Milwaukee, which is um, obviously in Wisconsin. So mm-hmm. um, they're the ones who just stopped playing uh, or boycotted or whatever. So they're the ones that started it. Um, and then and Brian then, and them follow suit, right? Well, everybody kind of just followed suit. Because yeah. everybody, like, because the Magic didn't know anything about it until they were on the court. And they're like, oh, shit. So then, of course, they don't have anybody to play with. So that's two teams. And then they ended up, you know, everybody followed suit. And then they had, um, and then they had like, you know, meetings or whatever. And then, um, you know, LeBron voiced his opinion saying that he didn't want to play. Um, and Kawhi the same. So the two, you know, prominent teams in the West, um, LeBron mainly, obviously, um, said they weren't playing originally. Um, they had some player meetings and everybody else wanted to play, um, you know, all the other teams or whatever. And then apparently like Brian reached out to Obama and shit like that to get some, you know, counsel or whatever. And mm-hmm. they, they ended up playing. Um, so I'm not sure the specifics of, you know, what, what happened okay. in the meetings or whatever, but, um, but you know, obviously they came to something so that they're, yeah. they're, they're back out here playing. So how long right. was the season? Forced to be at the playoffs. What you mean? How long was the season? How long was the basketball season? It wasn't a normal length of a season, right? It was just a continuation of the season. Okay, so the, I don't know. I don't. I, you know, I don't follow NBA like that. Oh, uh, okay. So when when did yeah. the NBA? When did it stop? Did it stop right at March, and then they just continued it? Uh, well, yeah. So the season starts. I mean, the last game was between the Thunder and the the Jazz. Whenever I don't. I mean, it was in March, obviously, but. Um, so they just continued like they had like wherever the, where the seedings were, they had like seeding games where they played every, all the teams that were on the bubble. Like, so basically they brought, um, from the East, obviously they brought eight teams and then cause eight teams made the playoffs gotcha. um, per, per conference. And then they brought like two teams that were on the bubble that could have, you know, based on their record, they could have, you know, played themselves in. Cause then once they got there, same thing for the, the Western uh, conference as well. So they had, but they had more people vying for the ninth spot, uh, or excuse me, the eighth spot. So, um, yeah. And then they played playing games. So, like, basically, it was kind of like tournament style basketball. Like, you know, you, you played, um, played eight games basically where see where your seeding was. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were in a fourth spot, then you could win, win out and possibly get to a third spot and shit like that. And obviously, if you're in the ninth or tenth spot, they were fighting to get into the eighth spot. So, um, 
Yeah, it was good basketball, man. Okay. Mm. I didn't know. I didn't I didn't even know it was a, a continuation from the, the previous season. I was just or the the season that was currently going on. I thought it was like whole new shit. It's crazy that you don't watch basketball. Basketball is great. I told you I think that professional basketball is not that exciting to me anymore. It, it hasn't really been exciting to me 50 since points at, a, at a at a time. Like Donovan Mitchell and Jamal Murray, which is how I'm gonna have to get to after this shit, but um, them niggas are scoring like 50 points a piece. Shit is exciting. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah, scoring, but you know, I, I told you I kind of like the the how you get to the bucket. Like, I feel like it's a lot of fundamentals. It's just not that exciting to me anymore. It's you score, I score, you score, I score, and then of course you have your your great players like your Lebrons and your Steph Curry's and and things like that. But I just don't uh, see the entertainment factor that I used to see in it. And then I told you my attention span is not long enough for NBA basketball. It's just so many games, like so many games. If it was some light shit like NFL or at least like 50 games or something, yeah, like 100 games, like 80 games or some shit. I I just thank God it in me for that. And, and I, I've never, I've never really like had a team outside of like rooting for the Bullets or the Wizards. Mm. Like for, I, I've always liked um, players for the most That's part, good. you know I mean, what I'm saying. There's enough players in the league to be. I mean, to have player teams. You know? Yeah. I mean, like player. There's so many good players, man. Shit is the most talented NBA ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it is definitely some guys out there that if if they're if they're big enough, I definitely know. But I I I usually will watch um, when it comes to like the playoffs and the finals. Just because now the shit coming to a close and I want to, you know, see what's been going on, what made them so special to, you know, get here. And especially when you have like rivalries and shit like that going at each other or LeBron versus any other big name <laughs> that's out there. Uh, I always fuck with LeBron though. LeBron, LeBron is, 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 is one of my favorite players like on and off the court or whatever. So, you know, shout out to them and, and shout out to, um, the NBA for protesting. Uh, shout out to the WNBA uh, for, for, sure. for for protesting. Um, um, Homegirl, the tennis player. Uh, oh, uh, I uh, uh, Naomi Osaka. Yeah. Uh, she she protesting. You know, I think that I think that it's important because if we take away entertainment, what y'all gonna do? We right. entertainment. We are entertainment. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We we got your music. We got your sports. We got your TV. We got you know what I mean? Like they may be able to do all right with with TV, but everything else, we kind of got it on the lock. You know what I mean? So like, what what are we gonna do? I I, I thought that was. I thought that was great, and you know, we we've, we've said this on the show before that the the NBA has entirely way more balls than NFL players. Like, so fact. NBA, they they say they shit. They know what they mean. They know they know their worth. You know what I'm saying? And even you got the big guys like Bron and all them kind of leading the charge. Whereas that would go that would have gone so far. I don't know what what state the NFL is in now, but that would have gone so far if this would have happened four years ago. Um, all right. But yeah. hey, you, you you gotta take it when you can get it better late than never, I guess. Um, I've I've I, I had a decent weekend. I I told y'all I've been moving and like just going through shit and getting rid of shit and all that and figuring out what to keep and what to give away. Um, do you do any like good purging when when you move? Yeah. You've always I mean, been I that way. Uh, I mean, I just randomly throw shit away. Like my old lady's like kind of like a hoarder and shit. So yeah. I always just I go through spells of just throwing shit away. Um, That's but I mean, good. Yeah, everybody, whenever you move, you got to purge. You realize all that. You ain't trying to take all that shit with you. So yeah, I mean, that's everybody. Yeah. You just accumulate shit over the years when you live somewhere. Yeah. So that's just going to happen. You and always you realize accumulate that you'll shit. never need it, you know. And you take, you might even take it from house to house, but then one real, one day you realize, like, I don't need this. I <laughs> Facts. I didn't even know this shit was here for seven years. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's how I was. You saw, I've been in Atlanta for five years now. And mm -hmm. I told you I had a full relocation package. So mm -hmm. the niggas came in and like, 
packed up everything. So I have shit that I'm just like, damn, this been in the store. Cause I have a storage area too. Um, in, in my apartment on my patio and shit been there for five years. So mm. like, if I ain't use this shit in five years, yeah. nine times out of 10, I don't need the shit, but I'm going through yeah. the shit and you know, it's, it's stuff that I'm keeping and shit. Like I'm keeping like, pictures and all that shit like you gotta keep that type stuff like yeah, i feel like you gotta keep pictures and i thought about it like damn like i like pictures like i like the act of randomly finding pictures and seeing shit from god knows how long ago you know especially during a time where we would actually print out pictures and do shit with pictures you know but i love printing out pictures tangible pictures are dope that's yeah. a little start. Yeah. And I was just like, damn, like, if you think about it, like, in 10 years, 20 years or some shit, like, your kid's going to be going through, like, it ain't going to be half the amount of pictures that we used to have. Because everything I mean, on your it phone will be. You just want, Yeah, I mean, they're going to be on your phone, but I print out a lot of pictures. Though. I you go do? to, like, um, Shutterfly or some other shit like that and just print out pictures. Shutterfly. I like Damn, pictures. I ain't even heard of Shutterfly in a minute. I use uh Walgreens. Oh, okay. Walgreens, you usually get in your pictures for less than 10 cents. Mm-hmm. And they usually have like mad fucking uh, sales going on, like, you know, like coupons and shit for like pictures. Right. Um. So I, I, I'll randomly print out pictures too, but I so the way that I um, organize my shoes is that every few months I take pictures and I put it on the boxes. So when I'm going through that process of printing those pictures out, I just go through my phone and like add other shit in there. You know what I mean? Like other shit I've right. taken over that time period and just kind of, and just kind of print them out. But I was just like, damn, like everything is going to be like in the cloud or, on people's phones yeah. or Digitized, yeah, sure. where people can't find them. Like, think about it. Like, God forbid something happened. Yeah. Who got your? Who got access to your cloud <laughs> to get yeah. your pictures off of it? That's and true. then, yeah. would you even want them to get your pictures off of it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Depending yeah. on what those start pictures printing pictures off, man. Start, I need to. I haven't printed off some in probably like a year or two, but. I'm about to go through and print some shit off. Yeah, like just pr- is it is it other things like you keep like I saw like like I have like some I have like certain things that I hold near and dear to me that I feel like marks a certain place in history, right? So I have like a few like magazines and shit where it's like hold on the cover or introducing Eminem or cause I used to get like vibe magazines and shit like that. Like back in the day, double XL vibe. Like I was into all that type stuff. I used to get other stuff like black enterprise and things like that. But like my hip hop magazines, like I'm looking at magazines where it's just like new artists, Kanye West, like yeah. all types of like crazy it's be a collector's shit. item that's that's certainly something i mean shit like that you should certainly keep if it's in good condition yeah absolutely yeah it's just like a book you know what i'm saying yeah it marks my superior piece Any, anything you you keep nah you don't really don't keep, keep shit, shit like that. nah i'm cool yeah i don't like i don't like clutter and shit and like because i ain't gonna do shit with it like because i'd be having so much shit like um, I, i'll amass so much shit and then i was like man fuck out of here like i don't have cds i don't have dvds i don't have none of that shit like, yeah we talked about you getting rid of your uh dvds and i think yeah, I'm i mean like, it's not that i get rid of it but i might just like if i'm cleaning my car out of some shit and like i ain't had no like cd book and shit you know what i'm saying so like i just had i don't know i just always had mixtapes i always just had albums and shit and you know, if I had it in the thing or if the shit broke, you know, I now I got it in my phone, so I don't really be tripping. Yeah. I don't keep none of that shit. I have uh I have CDs, I have DVDs. Uh my main artists, like I keep I keep their CDs. Uh my DVDs, I told you I'm not getting rid of that yet. Like, I don't know. I think of it like when I like go to my grandma's house and see like her vinyls and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, man, it's, and it's dope. I, I get it. it, like, it I, it's super dope. I, I got uh, like, like I, 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 I keep it like boxed up, so it's not like in the way or like what I personally would deem as like clutter. But I have like the newspaper when Obama won the first time. 
Um, oh, yeah. so, you know, like historic, like shit like that, because I feel like we were talking about Instagram the other day and I was telling someone that I just feel like Instagram is photo blogging. Right. So this is where I was in my life at this point in time where people go in and they like clean up their Instagram and delete shit and people they don't like and boyfriends and girlfriends they no longer with. And, you know, I'm not that type of person. I'm like, this was me then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I like seeing like that progression or I'm the type of person, like I like going down like that memory lane type thing, like off some random shit be like, damn, I remember when this shit happened. I remember when that shit happened. And like, I'm just not a kind of like an erase history type person. Even if that history may have been like slightly darker than you wanted it to be. Like I hold on to certain things like that. And, it, it just brings a good feeling back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just brings a yeah, good feeling back. Sure. Or you see Absolutely. your damn progress. Like, damn, yeah, I was looking crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely do that. <laughs> um, uh, damn, did you, I know you watch Versus. Absolutely. What, what's your rundown? What's your, what's, it was beautiful. It was one of the most magnificent nights of, of my life. It was a great <laughs> night. Just, I mean, in terms of like, it was just dope. Cause like I watched that and then I watched the game and like, um, CP3 took over and shit and he was killing and talking shit and it was just fucking it. And that shit was just dope. It was just a fucking extremely dope night to be, you know, I mean, cherish this. Ama- it's amazing what you cherish at this point in life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was just dope. You know what I'm saying? Like they are. Brandy is one of the greatest fucking singers of all time. Like her fucking, her fucking vocal ability is fucking bar none. Like it's, it's Whitney and it's Dan, it's like Whitney, Kiki and fucking, um, oh, goddamn Brandy. You put like, a lot of sauce on it. Hell yeah, she can sing like, did you hear the shit that she was fucking doing with her voice? That motherfucker is amazing, bro. Like that motherfucker is amazing. So like, we, had she's fucking Cinderella. We, we had this discussion. Uh, in the last podcast and what's crazy for me is I was just like, uh, I don't know. Cause she was giving a, a lot then, but I think actually after hearing this battle, I'm willing to put my money up and we give them a song and have Monica sing it and let Brandy sing it. I, I got my money on Monica. Uh, I think I like I power know. and I think you like runs. You like people the, who can go. She can fucking. Like, that's she your is shit. Fucking amazing, bro. Brandy like, is amazing. Amazing. Brandy she is amazing. Amazing, like the shit that she can do with her, like the things that she can do with her voice is fucking. What did she do with her voice? Like Brandy still gave me breathy. She still gave me. Nah, Have you ever? Nah, that shit was all in like all in fucking harmonies and the way she lay her shit and like all that shit that she can do like with her, within her voice like the 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 riffs and the runs and like the vocal the the control that she has over the shit that she does. <laughs> Brandy yeah, hit Monica with the oh yeah I can hear the harmonies in the background. It was so much shade on that joint. Yeah, it was nice. It was it was I told you it was gonna be a lot of nice nasty. And yeah. that's exactly what it was. A bunch was of dope, nice though. nasty. Like, I think, I mean, like, I saw the, like, the little after when they walked off and shit. They yeah. was like, you could tell they really, like, you know, that shit meant a lot to them. Like, it won't no fake, like, love. Like, they was hugging and laughing. I don't and know, Monica B. Was, I saw something different. I saw Monica something different. Monica was twerking and shit, like, after that, like, the I think the Monica shit. was keeping it cute. I saw what you saw. I saw that. I think, nah, I think Monica was, is a, is a keep real. it cute. I didn't, I didn't get that. And, and I don't think, if you talk to, an, have you talked to another woman? About this battle? Nah. nah oh, nah. I didn't know if your wife discussed it or, you know, any of your homegirls. Was girls at the same time. I mean, it was mad shade for sure. It was like, mad shade. You know, Monica shady. don't fuck with her at all. Like, Monica, exactly. But, like, but what it was is Brandy was trying to be her friend too tough. You know what I'm saying? But I think yes. Brandy is just naturally, like, she's just a weirdo a little bit. Yeah. And, like, Monica just cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just a gangster and shit. Yeah. So it was just like the. I can agree it with was that. Se- seeing the parallels or the, I guess, not the, the, the non parallels, uh, Perpin. Perpendicular. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the, fuck is, the opposite parallel would the be. The dichotomy um, between the two, they're very opposite yeah, in the way it was that just, they Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think Brandy kind of like a flower child and shit, you know what I'm saying? It's showing love. But, like, I mean, Monica was being a bitch, though. Like, she could, like, like, she didn't want to sing the boy's mind and she didn't want to sing none of the shit. Like, he was, I don't know. She was just being because, a bitch. Because, like, like, we here, we here. 
we 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 didn't play nice so that we can get this bag and that's what but we're you doing. Didn't, like but you hear though so you might yeah. as well make the best of it like you sing like you're a singer so sing the fucking songs like it's not that big of but, a deal, but brady like. kept throwing the lob too brady was throwing mad shade too like we're not gonna put this whole thing on monica brady nah, just I threw mean, the shade she, but, and then be like ha 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 and brought and monica looking like to but, girl she was that singing woman like, but she won't like she was like nigga we sing. like i felt her more because like bitch we sing like this is what we do yeah, we're two of the greatest that. singers of all time and we're here at this point like so sing this motherfucker like what's I the problem you. with singing it like i don't know that that shit was corny to me like i feel I, like I mean, it was, was dry both of them was super fucking dry and it was super fake however it was still dope as fuck like i, I feel like if they would have had half the energy of the guys that shit would have been super fucking lit I mean, I think their music didn't, I don't know. I mean, for what it's worth, I think uh, Brandy was trying yeah. outside of like the poems and shit. Like that shit was lame. But like <laughs> she was trying to inject like some, some, some comedic jet, jest She in was there, trying you know to cut the tension, but she couldn't yeah. read the room or jokes wasn't landing. Like, I mean, some of them were though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but at least she was trying. Monica was just being a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like she was just being a bitch. Like. But I mean, I appreciated like the conversation that they had, you know what I'm saying? Like between the two, like you could tell like certain, like, yeah, it was shade, but it was a lot of realness still. You oh, know it was saying? a like, lot of both of that. I agree. Yeah, but was, you can was, tell you know. that the tension was thick. It was super thick. You could cut it. Um, I, I feel like they tried. I feel like they both probably did yeah, the best great. that they could. <laughs> that shit was great. <laughs> and was it was fun. still great. Like it was still great. I was up dancing. I danced the whole time. I jammed the whole fucking time. Shit, and keeping it a band, like fucking Brandy was like owning some shit. Like we should do a tour. We should do a TV show. Like who would not watch Brandy and Monica TV show? Like to see them like interact and in, on like a real life, you know what I'm saying? Like where it could potentially be some fucking drama, you know what I'm saying? Like that. It shit, would probably man. have to be like a reality show type deal. Of course, no, no script. I don't want to see them script. I'm definitely want to see them in real life. Like that shit would be dope. She was. I was thinking. I was like, shit, Brandy, I know some shit. Like Brandy know Sonya. about this bag. She know she got that Sonya. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And I Ray J. Shit. <laughs> so Ray J and it was a meme showing Ray J eyes shifting, looking like. I'm looking for a moment to do some promo <laughs> to plug a project. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Ray J, one of the greatest of all time. Oh, yeah, bullshit. Hey, Ray J, we talked about Ray J being a go and how Ray J don't get the credit that he deserves yeah, for yeah, a Ray lot J, of shit. Ray J, Ray the Ray things J that Ray J do is bigger than fucking Ray J. Mm -hmm. Shit, I, don't, I wouldn't even say that because if it won't, it, they, they just, they Ray J. Like, that shit is Ray. Like, if you know, that shit ain't bigger than Ray J to me, because that shit is Ray J. Like, that's what bruh do. Like, I'm I'm well aware of how Kim Kardashian the game is Ray J. Kim Kardashian is Ray saying. J. The Breakfast Club is Ray J. Like, we talked about all Nigga, of this shit. reality that... TV is rucking Ray J. Nah, like, I wouldn't do that. Him and Flav, you know, for, for what mean, it's worth, him uh, and Flav. Uh, love, uh, dating shows, I can give that. I mean, it's reality TV, regardless. Like, love and hip hop is nothing but that. Like, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's just, but it's the credit spin. to reality TV goes to real world. I mean, yeah, but in terms of like black shit, like on some, like it was slave, that was spearheaded, like that movement was slave and fucking Ray J. But, but like I said, that goes back to just my point of Ray J is involved in a lot of things that have that are bigger than Ray J. Like, unless we sat here and talked about it and broke it down, most people wouldn't even know that Ray J had any type of affiliation or wouldn't have thought that, hey, we need to give Ray J credit for this. Like, Ray, J, to go. Ray J has his hands in a lot of things and has helped a lot of people get a lot of money. That's a fact. <laughs> Ray J, yeah. Ray. Ray J. Shout out to Sonya. Sonya's a fucking monster. How oh, y'all playing? She got, I got them kids rocking. Yeah. Sonya was, uh, Sonya probably laid the blueprint for Chris. Chris yeah, Jenner. For sure. Chris, hey, Kardashian. Nigga, Sonya was... had Brandy as the fucking, uh, Cinderella, nigga. Like, that was, that was, nigga, that was huge. Yeah. Like a black Cinderella. Yeah. Like, nobody was Cinderella before fucking, like, no black person was Cinderella ever. I agree. It was fucking Brandy. I agree. That, brand, that goddamn Brandy Norwood was special. Still is. Listen, shit. but what we worth. what we not gonna do is not give fucking Monica her props. Oh no, nah. for being Monica's fucking twelve nigga. years old and killing oh, nah. everything since nah, nah. she was twelve years old. That shit she old. dropped with little baby is fucking ridiculous. Like that shit is fucking ridiculous. I gotta hear like, it again. I think it's that a good vibe though. Dude. I like the vibe. 
Nah, that shit was that shit was hard. She was spitting and shit. That shit was dope. Uh, that shit, I'd listen to it today. I was like, oh, this shit hard. I need bitch, to listen it to it again. Then. I was like, oh, I like the vibe. I don't really know. I, I couldn't get into hard. the words like Off that at that moment. That shit was hard. I fuck with that. Monica's nah, man. She did Angel of Mine. Like they, they. That's why I said it was a tie. Like in terms of music, it was a tie. There's no way that you, nobody can have a definitive winner in that. Shit I had anybody. a definitive winner, and no it, it it went. I told you what my scoring system is. Uh, I don't go round for round. I go holistically, and I mark the songs that I don't like. And whoever had the most songs I don't like, the other person is the winner. So based on my system, and my system always seems to align with what the public feels as far as the round for round. And I was team Monica. Um, but based on my scoring, Brandy won that by one. Mm. Brandy won it by one. That shit was a tie. That shit was straight. Brandy won it by one. When Monica started, I didn't like, like the songs that, uh, I don't like uh, Monica's. You remind me of my Gucci shoes. I don't like that shit. I don't like uh, uh, sideline hole. No, nah, that shit was trash. Like I, don't, I, I ain't really like none of those. But it was she, a couple joints that I ain't really like. Some throwaways from Brandy that I won't feel. So like, yeah, Brandy played pound three. Pound I didn't pound. like, and I don't even that really shit, know the names of those joints. Down the middle, that shit was fucking. Spec- that shit was spectacular. I, that shit was a tie. Like, and then it was even more so a tie because like. Brandy was singing and Monica won't sing like being a bitch. Like, and Brandy was like, still, you know what I'm saying? Singing like a motherfucker, man. She, that's my nigga. That shit. Was, she, you that love shit Brandy. Was Shout out to Brandy. I love Monica too. Like, I love Monica, but man, them motherfuckers are, I love both of their asses. Like, they are really, truly like exceptional. Like, in the fact that like they still doing it and, you know, to a high level and shit. And it's just, I, I was, I was, that shit was great. I'm definitely, if that bitch is going to, I'm in there. Uh, I Man, said Brandy. Fact. I said Brandy, Monica, Keisha Cole. I'm playing top dollar. I'm in there. Would be, uh, so I, I brought this up. I, I think no I texted on. you. I, <laughs> I, I brought it up to somebody else, and they was like, "Well, now nah, it wouldn't work because they would be fighting over who is the headliner." And my response was, "Well, one thing we do know is that Keisha Cole is opening." Oh, yeah, and they course. said, "Hell no! Why would why would Keisha Cole be opening? Why the fuck like would Keisha Cole songs? not be opening?" What are you talking about? She had like she had a one good album and maybe two. two she had like two. two. Her two, first two albums. Two. Were good. She had two. We gonna get and Keisha she had, Cole. You know, two. like probably like seven Lucy that with like Missy and yeah. Well, I think that was on shit. Let but. it go. That was on Khaled. No, what's the joint? I told you that was on Diddy joint. I told oh, you yeah, once. I told you twice. I love that shit. That was on press play. Um, yes, yes, yeah, yes. I love that. Press play was my shit. Love. Press she play was my shit. Jaheem, that was that shit too, though. That's my shit. Um, hey, fuck Jaheem, so though. Yeah, we cool on him. We Nobody cool on Jaheem. Jaheem on um, some maga shit. Fuck Jaheem, yeah. looking weird fuck as fuck. Keisha Cole. Yeah, Keisha Cole. She definitely would open. Like, Keisha Cole definitely got to open. Keisha Cole ain't a legend. Yeah. Keisha uh, Cole is a great singer. I don't think Keisha Cole is cemented as a legend. Uh, I would say she's a legend. She kind of spearheaded some reality TV showing your, your, fa- your crazy family and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, in in the midst of, like, being... I don't know. I, I give her legendary status. Uh, Keisha Cole doesn't ha- have legendary status in my book. Yeah, I, she, I, like, I think on... she could be if she get herself together and some uh, shit she but a legend. she always gonna be able to she got two good albums and, and at least 10 songs she always gonna be like if you got 10 songs like that are dope you a legend cause niggas don't be having 10 songs if that is the criteria then I would say okay I agree with you um but it's a lot of motherfuckers out here with 10 wax songs too there are no, motherfuckers out I'm here not, nobody's talking about that though like nobody says like oh they got 10 wax songs they're a legend nobody we're talking about like good shit like that would put them in legend, like a legacy act. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody that can just like live on their catalog for the rest of their life. And Keisha Cole is definitely one of those people. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think Keisha Cole could definitely live off, live off her catalog for the rest of her life. Now, how she would be living might be different. But I definitely think that she could live off of her catalog for the rest of her life. Shit, all you need is one hit. And we're going to talk about that later. Shit, all you need is one good hit. And you can live off that shit forever, for real. And you can definitely live a regular life off one hit. 
And yeah, they, but she ain't regular. She rich. Like she doing all right. Uh, well, I've heard Keisha Cole and some of her issues that she's had and dealing with her family. And then you got to understand just because niggas got hits don't mean they got money. You hear niggas being broke every single day with hits yeah. out there living in their fucking cars and shit. So don't I mean, let the hits confuse you thinking people no, got money. I, mean, I know I'm, I'm well versed in all that, but Keisha, Keisha, all right. like, Keisha ain't fucked up by any stretch. So she's good. Yeah. I uh, saw some shit where the fam still. Then her family, poor, yeah. poor family, like, and, and, yeah. and Keisha Cole is a prime example of, you can even teach motherfuckers to fish and they still won't do it. Like she put yeah, her man. mom and her sister on and they still like on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's just the game. Like some people got, it's, it's, it's in you, ain't on you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a sad situation. Um, I want to say, uh, Give quick happy birthday shout outs real quick to a few of my favorites. Um, give a shout out to uh Cameron, happy birthday. Uh shout out to a friend of mine named Renetta. She just joined the 40 Club. Happy birthday to her. Uh shout out to my homegirl Skinny. Happy birthday to her. Hey Skinny. Uh, and shout out to um our girl Shay from Chatty Patty, she had her birthday on Friday. Um, oh, yeah. Happy birthday to her. All of the Virgos and shit. Happy birthday to y'all, man. Um, before we get into uh, B's Black Facts, um, I want to ask you, did you see, uh, I think it happened the night that we recorded in the Republican uh, National Convention with fucking coon as Daniel Cameron. Uh, Is that the, the, dist- dude? the district attorney who's uh, has the say so whether the police are arrested for Breonna Taylor's murder. Yeah. He spoke. I ain't see it. I don't, I ain't see it. I don't be giving a fuck about it. If you ain't talking about what I want to hear, you ain't saying shit yeah. to me. So fuck you, you bitch ass nigga. Yeah. Fuck him. You told him I said it. Yeah. Relay this message that, that we both feel that way, um, about his lame ass. Uh, he said that, I, I, he said this. This is what pissed me off. He said, even, this is a black man for y'all who don't know. He's a black man. I don't even know how old he is. If I had to guess, I would think like early 40s, maybe. Um, He said, even as anarchists mindlessly tear up American cities while attacking police and innocent bystanders, we Republicans do recognize work and good faith towards peace, justice, and equality. How do you go to your fucking family reunion? How do you go to like dinner, <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner without being the most fucking lame ass coon ass motherfucker outside of Terry Crews right now? Like, pretty sure he ain't going. He going to his wife, white side of his wife's family. Hey, I even went in facts. I went to, um, I went to his Instagram because he was tagged in. Yeah, I wonder that shit. Fucking it's, weirdo. It's white as fuck. Oh yeah, she's yeah. That shit. That shit look like a Hallmark card. <laughs> Even like the pictures of him with other politicians or other individuals, like it's white. It's a bunch of white. Yeah, people. that motherfucker. Yeah, that, motherfucker, that shit is weird, man. That shit is so weird. Like it's cool to be cool with white people because white is some good white folks yeah, out there. But sure. you know specifically, like, bro, you just I don't know. I just could never be the token any fucking thing. Yeah, I and could. I could, especially the token black guy amongst like that. I'm thinking I'm white. It's crazy that shit. That get out shit real, man. No, that get out. I'm supposed to be hiding in plain real. sight, man. That shit. A lot of this shit, like a lot of this cinema and shit. That should be should be having a lot of reality in it, man. There's some niggas that's fucked up out here. Yeah. Like I, 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 man, shit. I wouldn't put them past them. No, nothing surprised me now. Like for real. <laughs> Listen, there ain't no fucking way, bro. Like. It's no fucking way. Like, it's white people that don't understand how Breonna Taylor's murderers aren't. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is a, that, that shit is some other shit, bro. That is the most egregious thing, like, that I can remember that comes to the top of my brain that she is, that she was murdered and nothing, nothing has happened. 
Like that is the wildest thing that I've ever like. You know, they offered the the boyfriend a plea deal to say that she was selling drugs. Yeah, like, bro, kill me. Like, put give me life. I'd rather do life than do some fuck shit like that. Like, what? How how are you as a person? Regardless of what color, how are you as a person can even go and try to broker this type of deal? You wow, a, a devil, man. I'm telling you, man. One them white devils, cause like those aren't white people; those are white devils. And then they like, trying you can to do some devilish shit like that. Facts. You just, you just something else, cause I, I just feel like this is almost a good and evil type thing. Like I don't, I don't yeah, really I mean, see the any devil gray. And God. It's the devil and God. I'm telling you, like that shit, like the little white boy that killed. The motherfucker, man. Rick House. That's yep. the devil. Uh, yes. He's the fucking devil. Fucking the white boy that killed um, Dylan Roof. The fucking devil. Like, if you can just, just like, go hunting for people, you are fucking hunting you are for people. cannibalistic devil, fucking Satan spawn, fucking salt of the earth, fucking any other fucking catchphrase in that that would <laughs> right. apply. Um, no, you're right. Those. It it's, it, it made me. Weird, bro. It made me upset that they're basically like oh he's too young to be held accountable uh he was an inspiring cop he thought he was helping and you thought going out here killing people was helping that's what you thought right. and that's what y'all that's the that's the narrative y'all gonna push yeah. it, it, it's heartbreaking because you have somebody like a a tamir rice mm-hmm. who had a fake gun and is dead and you have a have a a, a seventeen a twelve year old with a fake gun that is there, but you have a seventeen year old, technically a man at this point in time, go by with an assault rifle and kill people and still be able to go home. Shit, crazy. Still able to go home, and then you ask a a a, a, a motherfucker like Trump, who I say like, just when I think I don't have another wow in me, he pulls another wow out of me. And he's basically making the claim of, yeah, he, you know, they attacked him and they probably would have killed him too. Like we, you know, we're, we're looking into it and all it they is. They kill a motherfucker with an AR-15 and they ain't got them no weapons. None. How's that going to happen? He was violently attacked by, uh, and he killed another white man who mm-hmm. attacked him with the uh, skateboard. He was protecting like some other people. And how is that okay? Like, how is that okay? How are we finding all of these things to say? And beat up a girl. Yes. And beat yeah. up a female. Yeah. But we finding all of these titles to put on homeboy who was shot in the back. And his name yeah, is Jacob. True. And and I and and I'm disappointed with myself right now because there has Same. been so many names that now I can't keep up with the names. It's Jacob something. Uh, it escapes me. We did this shit last week, and I apologize, brother. It is. Right. It is. It, 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 it's sad. Like, it's sad because yeah. we have to remember so many names, my nigga. Like, we have to remember so many names. Like, this is not even something that yeah, is. There's no outliers here. It's fucking. Yeah. This shit is a corral of fucking people. And I definitely feel like, like they make, they say like a month in a month <laughs> it's been like, since the quarantine, my nigga's been mad motherfucking people like nigga, what the fuck? And we still didn't focus <laughs> on all these people that was found hanging from trees, my nigga. Nigga, come on, man. Like we, we God, still damn, haven't man. figured that this out shit, yet. This, bro, it's a lot of shit going on. This the most shit ever. I don't give a damn. Yeah. Like, I don't, it, 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 like the only thing I think that can compete with this is like when like, <laughs> like the earth broke up when like Pangea disbanded and shit. Cause otherwise, this is, the, <laughs> this is it. Like my nigga, like it's, it's seventy yeah, things going can, on at one can. fucking time. I, I, I have the only thing that can beat this is Pangea. Like when Africa was and when that shit broke, when yeah. America and shit broke away from Africa, that's the only thing. Yeah. Other than that, maybe when the dinosaurs died and shit, that's probably when they died at the same time. So that was probably one of the two or three things that was happening at the time. But yeah. This is this is the most. This is the most. This, this is the most. This good. is the most. And you talked about like movies, like you talked about like movies and shit like that. Like been telling us, like when you say like get out and all that shit. Like the crazy thing about it is, I've always um, I I, I was the person who like would look at movies and shit. And, like yeah, this shit. I'm sure this shit got some basis to it or, you know, like whatever, whatever, or like shows like scandal and like shit like that, where they telling you how the shit work behind the scenes and shit like that. 
I feel like every movie and every show I've ever watched is in full fruition right now. Like, it's just like. Nigga, it's a whole hurricane that happened last week. Nigga, like, 40 devastating... children got rescued from sex traffickers and we ain't talking about it. Nigga, we ain't talking about the hurricane. It's like, this shit is crazy, man. My man is like, my, like, my people was in, like, you know, in fucking Louisiana at this particular time preparing for a fucking hurricane. And then, like, my homeboy live in Lake Charles and his fucking house is completely, I don't know if it's completely gone. I won't say that, but I think, like, a big ass tree fell on his fucking crib. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers is dealing with that in the midst of all this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like a whole town is obliterated. Like Lake Charles, Louisiana is fucking obliterated. Like a, an entire hurricane landed on this particular city and left. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, But it's so crazy because I didn't know any damage was done like that. That's what I'm saying. That's the crazy part. Like, that shit really? is like that shit is fuck a category it, that shit was a category three four like the size of the shit was the width of North Carolina like from the state of North Carolina from the coast to the mountains that shit was the width of that and it landed on the fucking uh town that is type crazy. shit like that is insane like yeah that. man that shit fucked up like <laughs> shit is like the whole world up. is in so much chaos you don't even know where to focus your chaos man, like, to man, focus listen, your attention man. on what chaos that shit crazy. I, I was um, Nigga, kids is homeschooled. That shit is a fucking shit show. Like it's so much fucking going on. Shout out to my niece. She she started high school from home yesterday. I didn't even know she started school yesterday until I talked to her today. Like you start in high school online, and then you also have Nigga, like these videos starting of kindergarten online. Your kids are in pre K. Well, one of my kids. Is. Yeah. How is that? Trash. The fuck you think? <laughs> you know how it is. What the fuck you talking about? Yeah. Like, how are you? How is your? I'm, I'm assuming your wife is doing it because you're probably working during that time. How is she keeping him focused? She. I mean, she's only. They only do it like an hour at a time. Like this is their first week, so they're like it's kind of like an introduction or whatever. But, um. You know, but he's, he's so used to it. He's been having his fucking kids, his brother and sister, like there the entire time since fucking March. So like now that they're in school and like we got them, you know what I'm saying? Like they're in second grade. So they reading and fucking doing mad shit. You know what I'm saying? And math and all that shit. He's fucking like losing his shit. Cause he ain't had his brother and sister to play with for the past, like the past two days. Cause like the two weeks before they were only on from like nine to 10 okay. or nine to 11. You know what I'm saying? Just like an introductory warm up type shit. But now, like, they, it's full tilt. They on till three o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he going crazy and shit because he can't fucking, he ain't got no attention. Aww. They ain't paying no attention. My, my my wife is fucking, like, being a, ner- a teacher's aide and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That shit, this shit is fucked up. Do you hear me? This shit is fucked up. We have all of this shit going on. Yeah, this shit is and fucked we go up. right back to the same thing of, so we can't just force everybody to wear a mask so we can get over this shit. Man, this shit ain't going nowhere, my nigga. Until it ain't going nowhere until they have a vaccine that they can adequately charge for. Yeah, and I ain't taking that either. So my kids ain't taking it. So right. this, this is probably so. Like I'm not anti how, like, vaccine, remember, but I'm not about never, to take this new shit. Shit, no, I'm not. That shit, hell no, nah. nigga. It takes the the quickest vaccine in history that they produce. It took two and a half years for them to produce. The quickest vaccine, and I think that was for like MMR, like measles, mumps, and rubella, or some shit. And since then, since then, they've obviously enhanced it and did whatever. They fucking added some more fucking bullshit in there, but <laughs> like that's the quickest vaccine in history, and that shit took two and a half years. And they about to whip up something in six months. Listen, tell you, yeah, yeah. I need to know why we you need a vaccine. Trail but tears, me. Everybody else didn't need vaccines. Why we gotta have a vaccine, nigga? That shit crazy, bro. Uh, like that shit crazy. I'm trying to figure it out. Shit. It's other countries that's back to where they need to be. They didn't with no vaccine. Cool. They're trying to sell us a vaccine. That's what it nope. is. Won't catch me. No, nah, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Uh, I see. I you ain't trail of tears in me. Yo, I ain't fucking <laughs> putting no syphilis on my jacket. Right. You send me up the road. <laughs> you ain't oh, about to Tuskegee that. a nigga out shit, here. No. <laughs> Not me. Oh, uh, why you <laughs> quicker than Jack? Jack, bro, it 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 it's 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 just it's just completely wild out here, and people out here they getting it, they still getting it, and it's not it's still not slowing up. We just down. went into phase three today. We can't. Our only thing ain't open is bars. 
like individual bars, just like standalone bars and shit. Those okay. ain't open, but our gyms opened up today. Oh. Our mayor, our, our mayor, our, our governor, uh, Roy Cooper. He, I mean, he did, he did a good job. I mean, the soft, the the phases of opening because we were supposed to open phase three, like, uh, shit. I think at the beginning of August, but he puts that shit all the way this time. So I ain't going to no gym. I'm chilling. Yeah, I ain't doing shit. I do want to go just because I miss the gym and shit. But yeah, I've I've been outside and sh- doing shit. Yeah. I mean, I done bought mad fucking weight weight equipment and shit. I bought some resistance bands and shit. I follow mad like little deal pages on Twitter and all type yeah. of shit. My wife do too, so I be finding like ten dollar resistance bands and shit like that. Oh, oh yeah, let me get that. I, I, I follow uh, Fat Kid deals on uh, Twitter, and I yeah, normally find shit I there. I bought some resistance bands from there um, as well. I also <laughs> let me tell y'all what I bought. Yo, I purchased, uh, um, so I had to start taking some biotin and biotin is supposed to be good for hair and nails, or you can be like me and have an allergic reaction to it. So it broke mm. me out. Right. And so I stopped taking it and, but I'm still like breaking out and shit. So, um, I've been trying to like avoid unnecessary trips to like the doctor and shit, even like the dermatologist. Um, but I um saw this thing. So your phone is always lurking, first of all. I don't think you have any private business because your phone is listening. So I get something from Amazon talking about like a um like basically like stop busting bumps and get like this fucking uh blackhead remover, like instant thing, like you put it on your face and not only that, like it opens up your pores and like shit like that. So it's not just for that, but you know, it's to refine your pores and, 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 and lines and all that shit. And it was a good ass deal for the shit. So I ordered this shit and I used that shit the other day. And basically that bitch sucked the fuck out my face. And then it looked like I had a whole fucking bruise on my face. Mm. So then I got to explain to people that is not a bruise. Like now motherfuckers thinking I'm getting my ass beat. Mm. (laughs) It's like a whole fucked up situation. And I thought that it was going to make it better. Uh, But I bruise easily. First of all, Um, I bruise and I scar very easily. And now it just looked like, and because it was like near like my eye and shit, now I got to tell niggas like, oh, I walked into a door. Like mm. classic fucking battered woman. <laughs> listen, I listen, if, if I'm getting my ass beat, just, I, I probably deserve it because I can't see that happening. Like I just can't see me get my ass beat. Oh, especially not, uh, uh, more than once now if i run into somebody in the street some fucking muscle bound motherfucker beat my ass that's one thing but i ain't about to be in my home getting my ass beat that's just something i i really can't see happening. so for those uh who know me uh i did not get my ass beat i just want to say that <laughs> oh oh you ready to uh give your black fact you got that pulled up yeah um, well, we're gonna get into bees, black facts, gibbity bee bop bows, since y'all like my singing or whatever. Um, so yeah, it was just the they just had the uh anniversary of the march on Washington. Um, yes, I'm glad that you was on that. August 28th, 1963. Um, they just had it over the weekend. I really had every intention on going, had it Same. not been any COVID, I would love to have been there. Um, I still should have went either way, but whatever. It is what it is. But um, but yeah, on August 28, 1963, about a quarter million people participated in a historic march on Washington for jobs and freedoms gathering near the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, more than 3,000 members of the press covered the historic march in which Dr. Martin Luther King delivered the exalted I Have a Dream speech. Um, and it was, let's see. Uh, it was rig- originally conceived by renowned labor leader A. Philip Randolph and Roy Wilkins, um, executive ser- secretary of the NAACP. The March on Washington involved uh, into a collaborative effort amongst major civil rights groups and icons of the day. Um, so, you know, do your do your Googles on that and how important that was. But one of my favorite scenes in fucking movies, period. Forrest Gump is one of my favorite movies, period. Like, every <laughs> time Gump it comes on, I'm watching it at least for like 10 to 15 minutes. But, um, 
that scene where he goes to the when he goes to Washington and shit, and they were talking about like tell him about the war, tell him about Vietnam, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, tell him about Vietnam. <laughs> he was like, yeah, tell him about Vietnam. And he started telling him about that shit. Niggas pull all that shit, and he um uh, and he was like, when he got off, he was like, yeah, it was some 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 uh reverend fella that came up after me and they shot him. Like shortly thereafter, oh, that's one of my yeah, favorite yeah, parts yeah. of shit. But um, but I yeah, no, watch that during a good minute. I love Forrest Gump. It's one of the greatest Forrest movies Gump. of all time. For, Forrest Gump is a great movie. Uh, Gump shout out to Lieutenant Dan. Uh, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> I made a joke about somebody the other day because like uh, somebody was like talking about their knees getting amputated. I was like, oh, nigga, you think you Lieutenant Dan? I'm <laughs> in the fucking. We, <laughs> he was like, we was fucking on that ship when he was in that fucking ship. That nigga just dove out the fucking out the top of the ship into the water. Like, come on, Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs, and you finna dive in the wild sea. <laughs> but listen, wild. only you would hear about somebody getting their legs amputated or some shit and be like, oh, you think you Lieutenant Dan? <laughs> nah, it was like it was like a joke. Like they said something like, I'm at the amputate my legs or some shit oh, like that okay. I think you know it was like they were joking I was like who the fuck you think it was type shit but yeah I got won't lie I won't be in mean spirited I oh, have no, but listen, to do that you've before. also told a friend of yours that they look like fucking um of the mask oh uh, yeah and what's Rocky the nigga Dennis. name what's the what's the mask name you, you said his name Tim what's Carey the... no no that. not that mask oh you're talking about Rocky Dennis Rocky Dennis yeah <laughs> I didn't tell her. Maybe I did. You did. Been, yeah. Y'all go back on this show probably 20 I I episodes I ago. I, yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. You definitely told your friend she looked like Rocky Dennis and we then laughed and then wonder why she got mad. <laughs> that we you weren't said. friends at that time. So. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. You didn't you didn't divulge that piece of information. I think I did. That y'all wasn't did. friends? Got, so yeah, I think I I mean like we weren't like we were yeah, we weren't really friends. Like she was just Oh, I did, I never knew that it was anything mean about it. I thought y'all was nah, just was no going joke. it jokes. Wasn't like, yeah, it was I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I, I do remember saying that, but I don't know if I said it to her. Um, but I probably did. Yeah, you said, said that she was mad it. that you called yeah. her Rocky Dennis and <laughs> Hey, yeah. that's one of the funniest things. That is one of the, the funniest things. Sorry about that. But the crazy thing is, like, so many, um, again, we talked about so many things going on that I was just like, damn, like, what happened at the march this weekend? Like, I didn't hear There's anything from it. They, they said of tens of thousands, so it wasn't, like, millions out there or a million. I thought they would have got a cool million, but it's a lot nice. going on, so. Yeah, it's a lot going on. It's and it was hosted by Al Sharpton, so that's another yeah. uh take it with a grain of salt type thing um, I would have been there for sure if I could have um I, I said I was gonna go I never heard anything else about the shit like we talked about the shit and we talked about you know uh possibly going and all of that and then I feel like for the past three months I never heard anything else about it and then I'm looking at TV it's like oh uh, thousands are lined up for the march, and then I'm talking to my family like, "Yeah, such and such happening because this march going." On. I was like, "Yo, I missed the whole fucking march." 2020 has been so complicated that I missed the whole march. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. I, I seen, I seen several people I know that went up there though. That's dope. I, yeah, I, I saw some people on my timeline. That I know, but not anybody I have a close personal relationship. With. I've done that shit. Like I've I've participated in a in a march on Washington, so I always felt dope about that. I always felt you went like, to the Million Man March, didn't you? Uh, well, it was the Justice or Else March, okay. um, but it was you know Million Man March. I wanted to go, but no. Speaking of, that's a great movie. If you've never seen um, Get, Get on, on the Bus, bus. <laughs> it's a really good movie. It's on Netflix. Go look at it. It's awesome. Yeah, Get on the Bus. I remember Get on the Bus being a good movie. It's I really honestly good. can't say that I've watched it more than the first time that I watched it. It's really um, good. You should go check it out. You know what? What I realized about myself is, like, I'm not a big, uh, like, there are certain, like, classic movies that I, I watched multiple times, but I'm normally not a person that goes back and watch things that I've, I've already watched. I watch movies. I won't watch TV shows. Like I won't watch like, um, like say Sons of Anarchy or some shit. Like series, like series and shit. But like yeah. if it's like Fresh Prince Martin and shit like that, I grew oh, up. Oh yeah, 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 that certain. type of stuff. Yeah, yeah but like sure. I don't really watch series over. Like I'm not watching The Wire over again. I might, but I, I, I already seen it. I watched it and 
it was super slow. Yeah. I it was super slow Dexter compared again. to, and again, it's all about, you know, changing in your, your patience and like all of that. And I was like, damn, I don't remember it being so slow, but to today outside of the shy, you can basically have like a whole season in one episode and they got cliffhangers and all that shit. And then it's on to the next episode where when I watched the wire over again, I was like, dang, like we in three episodes, we haven't even got to the point where, you know, they placed the wire, like, or the government or whatever the case may be. I was like, damn, like, and that's a lot of shows that I watched. Um, like I watched the wire, like the L word, um, it's some other shows that I really liked in the, in the two thousands or the nineties or whatever. And I'm just like, huh? Like the speed is very different in entertainment now. Like you have to, everyone is competing for your, your time and everyone is competing for your stream or for, for you to watch TV. Like now you don't even have to have TV to watch TV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so there's all these streaming services and then you have your traditional networks and then you have all your cable channels. And, and then not only on top of that, you have YouTube. And then on top of that, you have your other free apps that have like movies and shit like that. So everybody is basically pleading for your time. And so you, you're trying to figure that out. So everyone is like, Oh, I need to be the next hot, hottest, biggest thing. So I got to put more. I got to cram more. And so I I think we've gotten to a point in our attention spans where it's just like, oh, this is taking too long to get to the point, which was an issue with, with the shy. Like, why why did we take so long to get here? Like, we should have wrapped this up. Three episodes. We could have had this whole season in three episodes and yeah. then moved on to, like, some new shit. But uh, did you start watching P-Valley yet? Nah. I okay. Didn't. Um, no, for some reason I ain't really fresh. I don't know. I was gonna I was gonna watch it, but I ain't really fresh. I'm gonna I'm gonna start watching Lovecraft mm-hmm. Country though. I heard it's really good. Her uh, that's something I said I was going to watch next. But the fact that you like women and the fact that you like strippers and the fact that you like gangster shit, I think you would like P Valley. okay, so I've heard like I've heard I heard that it's like it, like not really that good. Like it's just oh, doesn't really? have any point. Yeah. My wife said she was like, I just don't it's she was like, I don't even know what it's about. Like she was like, outside of the fact that they're trying to strip a strip club and shit in the strip club, she was like, It's nothing really. And then my cousin in Louisiana who's um he 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 was like, Bro, that shit trash. He, but again, what? everybody has their own. Yeah, career. everybody like, does. I feel like you should watch like an episode. Either, he was like the shot won't good. Like he was like, This this whole season was trash and I was like, Well that's true. So Did he like he it before it. though? Yeah, he liked it before. He was like, yeah, second season, the first and second season was great. He was like, this season was trash. Oh, yeah, this season was trash. I mean, that's yeah. just kind of, I think that's the unanimous decision. I haven't I haven't heard uh, anybody debate that, like, yeah. where we might debate P-Valley or something like that. I think that it's a good show. I think that it's different. Yeah, I think so that it, 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 it talks about basically, like, these strippers trying to come up, and these bitches can fucking dance. Like, they can strip and shit, like. It, even if you just going for that entertainment value, like it's great. Shout out to, I don't even know, uh, her real now. I know her name is Brandy, but, um, on the show, her name is Mercedes. Like she go up on that fucking pole and shit. Like she used to be like a choreographer and shit like that. She dope as fuck. Like she looked like the strippers in Atlanta, like mm. the performance factor of going up this pole, holding this, holding on to a whole pole with just your thighs. Nigga, my head would have been cracked the fuck open. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like no, you hold it. <laughs> that that's talent. But I think you should check it out. You may or may not like it. I don't know. I like it. It's the season finale um of it. And you know, uh it, it's it's like the one of the main characters is like this I don't know if you would call him gay or trans, um, but the owner of the strip club is like this dude that somebody said look like Morris Chestnut and that is hilarious because now he does look like Morris Chestnut um but like he's dating like this rapper and like all these things so I think it's a good show and it's only eight episodes <laughs> what do you have to lose um but I would but I'm definitely checking out love craft country uh but while we're talking about uh shows and things like that before we get into literature I want to say rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman yeah that fucked me up that was crazy. And John Thompson. Yeah, I was going to him next. But yes, rest in peace to John Thompson of Georgetown. Um, he died. I, think I thought Georgetown was a fucking HBCU from Mad Long. Really? 
No. Like before I knew like Georgetown was like Georgetown. Like when I was a kid and shit, like I thought Georgetown was a Because they had all coach. the best fucking black players in college in sports coach. at that time. Yeah, and the black coach. Yeah. Uh, when I went to go see um, college games, uh, we would go see Georgetown. Y'all know I play like sports and shit like that, play basketball, all that. So we would get tickets and things like that to go see Georgetown, you know, see uh, AI, see like all of these motherfuckers play for um, for John Thompson. And I didn't really know at that time that, you know, there are a lot of black coaches in, you know, yeah, kind of so. like Division One sports and shit like yeah, that. So I didn't know that. Win, he was the first one to win a national championship in basketball. It, 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 it's, it, it's, wow. He was, uh, I think he was in his 70s. He was, 70, uh, yeah, he was about to turn 79. A yeah. Um, Chadwick was only 43. Yeah, shout out to Chadwick, man. That shit fucked me up, man. That shit was like... I, I was listening to Van podcast today and it was, it was interesting. He said something. He's like, I just love to ask him like, why he, like, why, what did he think that he owed us or did like, you know what I mean? To, to perform at such a high level mm. and to, and, and to such a degree, you know what I mean? Um, with, with, with that, you know, like, what did he owe us? And he was like, I'd love to ask him that. Like, why do you think, like, if you, you know, if he can go back and sit and be like, yo, why had you what made you kept doing that considering that you knew what was going on and then the dude from um dude from the wire and uh the five brothers um forgot his name man but he's an actor and shit um the dude from the wire he was like one of the detectives and shit not not um what's his name i can't remember but anyway he was basically saying like they did five brothers together he was like yeah um he was like, what was your impression of him? He was like, I thought it was weird. He was like, I thought he was like, you know, kind of, you know, over himself because with the Black Panther celebrity and shit like that. Because he was like, he had a, like a personal masseuse and then he had like another person that was like massaging his feet. And then somebody else, like his old lady was there. Like, but he was like, in hindsight, looking at what the fuck it was, this man was sick as a bitch and needed, yeah. you know, every ounce of fucking love that he was receiving at that time to perform that role. And he was like, so that shit, he just, and he's, you know, 60 something year old man. He was like, that shit yeah. just taught me so much about life and he's like I've been here for a while and yes, I should have known that yes, you know what I'm saying yes yes and yeah, that's where that whole you know everything came back out like damn we you know we was calling this nigga about being over doing that Black Panther shit yeah, man. and homeboy was sick for real listen I think that um, we need to appreciate time if you have it you need to appreciate it I feel like you should waste time and I can see like a dude like him knowing that he's sick and he's like, you know what? I'm making my fucking mark. Like yeah. before I go, I'm making my fucking mark. And yeah, I can see how sure. that will push you to mm -hmm. make your mark and push through it. Like, what do I really have to lose? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm literally dying here and my time is, it's different when you know your stop clock. You know what I mean? When, when yeah. the, uh, you know what I mean? Like that's a different that's a different feeling. And, you know, I was talking to some friends, um, today, uh, actually, you know, shout out to Jada cause she kind of started like this thread, but, you know, talking about like how we are a part of this club, uh, who, who have lost parents or whatever. And like mm. how that is like a different type of club to be in and only, you know, people who are in the club understands what it means to like be in the club and, and to have lost parents. Cause that is, you know, that's your, that's who you first meet. That's who raised you. That's the people you've been around the longest and love you and things <laughs> like that. So like life without them is, is never really the same. Um, but you know, it's, it's time. Like if you're, if any of our parents probably knew like, when that that time was going to be up it probably would have been different if we knew when the time was going to be up and some people do get that you know what i'm saying one of my homegirls who, whose mother has passed and you know i gave her a rest in peace rest in peace to my edith like you know it's kind of which is better like which is better like knowing Neither. when it's gonna be up or it happens suddenly in my instance it happens suddenly so i deal with things that deal that go with that you know what i'm saying yeah, my homegirl deal with a different set of issues yeah it's like six in one hand half a dozen in the other yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. 
it's no, it's, it's, it's like picking your favorite child. It's not really a way yeah. to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing that can soothe you either way. It's like, cause now you have this end date and then, so you're trying to cram it all in, cram it all in. And then you might not even be taking it for, you know, taking it for what it's worth, you know what That's I mean? And then versus like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so like, I don't know, man, that shit fucked up. Life is hard. Life is hard. <laughs> Life, is, Life hard. is hard. Then I found out the dude that like that Cujo wasn't even Cujo, like yeah, it was a dog? fucking person. Yeah, man, I thought it was a dog. It was a fucking guy in a fucking suit. Life's the alive. It's fucking hard. Yeah, nigga. I'll it show was you a, a man in the suit. Yeah, I'm gonna send you the picture. Hold on. It was a man in the fucking suit. Like, look up Cujo man in the suit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> look up Cujo man in the suit. Bruh, that shit. is Life wild. is a lie, man. Life is a fucking lie, man. Life is a fucking lie. I'm gonna send it to you because it was great. Listen, you only get one life, man. And it's hard. Live yours. And it's Live a lie. <laughs> Make your life not a lie. But everything else can be false. Like <laughs> When I say this, you're going to be like, look at this shit here. Come on, man. Look at Cujo. I used to be fucking man terrified of fucking, like, I was terrified of fucking Cujo, but I loved that movie. Like, I remember me and my mama watching that movie together. And she was like, I should not. I remember she was like, I should not be letting you watch this. But she did. And it fucked me up. And now, when you see that, look at that shit. <laughs> no way. Life is no a lie. No way. <laughs> Life is a fucking lie, man. That motherfucker was fucking that no pencil way. up. You hear me? And that nigga like, looked was... like his name Scott some shit. Yeah, man. That nigga was a whole fucking white man underneath <laughs> that shit. That shit fucked me. I said, would you look at this shit? Like, that motherfucker was terrorizing them people, like, in that fucking pinto. They couldn't even get from the pinto to the fucking house, like... You know what I'm saying? Cujo, Cujo, and, and and Jaws get most vicious. Fucking what movie was the animals. Other one? What was the other one? Um, Who? With the black dog. A black dog. If it was a black dog, I know he was a terror. How he make it through the movie without getting shot seven times in the back? Hold on, what's this nigga name? <laughs> the Killer the black dog. dog. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you. This nigga was it was he was whack though because he was flying and shit. I think he was a. Uh, um, you thinking about Sharknado? Nah, man. Was that man's best friend? Yeah, man's best friend. You never seen man's best friend? I I, I want to say that I have because you know I'm a horror movie person. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to look horror. it up. Man's best friend movie. Man's best friend. Yep. You seen friend. that shit? He was like a Rottweiler and shit, and he was like bionic. And it was he was a beast. Yeah, like, he was like, yeah. <laughs> I do remember. Yeah, man. 1993. Jesus. Word, nigga. Yes, Word. I do. I it was do. whack because he started flying and shit. Like, oh, man, what the fuck? The dog, like, the dog had to start flying. Like, because he was like a robot or some shit. But, like, before that, that nigga was just a beast. Like, he was fucking at yeah, them super dog. And then, <laughs> yeah, that, then that. they took it to the next level with the nigga flying. But that before that, all that corny shit, that shit was a good movie. Yeah, I, I do remember that. Um, What about, like, uh, Godzilla? Dogzilla, I ain't never seen that. You never seen any of the Godzillas? Oh, I thought you said Dogzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that being a movie as well. Yeah, I'm, dead. I'm surprised today. Uh, Godzilla was kind of trash. I never really yeah, got into that wasn't that wasn't the greatest. I was just trying to think of like uh, famous uh, animals that are known for being like horror yeah. movie animals and shit. Like nah, like uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex out of fucking Jurassic Park. That motherfucker was vicious. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay. T Rex was fire though. Like that nigga was fucking eating fucking explorers and shit. That nigga was hard. Have you ever seen the movie Human Centipede? Hell no. Yo, it's some crazy shit. It sound like a damn a breakdancing movie. Oh no, it's everything but a breakdancing movie. It's basically about like this scientist type nigga who basically was making human centipedes and they have a part two. I couldn't even watch part two because part one had me so fucked up. But, uh, it, this guy, I think it was in another country. I can't remember what country, but he was basically making human centipedes. So you got three motherfuckers. Somebody get to be the head. Somebody get to be the tail and the middle motherfuckers mouth is, uh, uh, surgically placed on the other one's ass in front of him, yeah, and and and, and the, the dick nigga in the back got his mouth on the other one's ass, and so when the they feed what? the first one, and it's supposed to go through all three of the other niggas. Yeah, nah, that's stupid. It was crazy. <laughs> no, it was like some shit. Like you know how some movies like 
just kind of fuck you up in the head. Like, what the fuck? Like, yes. that was one you know of those what, movies. Who, you know what did that for me? It was two movies. It was Thinner yeah, by Stephen Thinner, King. Thinner, yeah. Thinner. That shit scared the shit out of me. And then as an adult, like, type shit. And then um, Skeleton Key. Skeleton Key fucked me. You ever seen Skeleton Key? Skeleton Key. Yeah, I seen Skeleton Key. Skeleton Key fucked me up. Like, that was on some what shit. What was Skeleton Key it, about? It was like it was in Louisiana. It was almost kind of like some get out shit. Like they would they would take motherfuckers' bodies and shit. Like, but it was black people taking white folks' bodies and shit. Like mm. that was an ill movie. I haven't seen Skeleton, Skeleton Key because I can see the cover. I can see the cover in my mind. Skeleton like, Key was ill. That was a dope movie. I'm gonna tell you the movie that had me fucked up. Like I'm good. Like I, I like horror movies. I can do killers. I can do you know all types of shit like that. But then when you get into like ghosts and spirits like shit that i can't fight <laughs> or have no way of getting away from like you have to be fucked up and like uh the ring had me fucked up i've never minute. seen that you've never seen the okay mm-hmm. so the the ring is basically like you you watch this fucking movie and then you see the ring and then like you fucked up from there on yeah i know like, the premise of it i just ain't never watched it, it looks stupid to me uh no, the ring was good for his time. I don't know how the ring has aged because I haven't watched the ring again. But I remember going to the movies and uh watching the ring. And any movie that's based on a true story, any horror movie that's based on a true story that's about like spirits and ghosts and shit like that, like be having me fucked up. Like nah, I don't even I don't do those. I don't do like spirits and horror like that because I'm just travel. I'm cool. Yeah, okay. that should be fake. But yeah, I get it. I get no. it. I get you not wanting to watch that. I can understand that. Because yeah, like I said, I, watched, I um, my bad, go ahead. No, I was just about to say, like, I don't watch horror movies as much as I used to. And I used to watch them all the time. Like, I used to watch them all the fucking time. And like, I could chill by myself and watch a fucking horror movie, like, in the fucking dark. And some people be like, oh, no, nah, I don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you tripping. <laughs> I, I, watched, my, I grew up with that. My dad, rest in peace. My, my dad fucking, we grew up on horror movies. We were young, young, young kids. I'm surprised we didn't. Well, I can't speak for my brother, but I'm surprised we didn't have uh, nightmares and like shit like that. My dad used to make it a hobby to scare us. Like he would put on a fucking mask and just come out of nowhere on your fucking six-year-old and your three-year-old and not give a fuck. Like, like we climbing all over my mom, screaming and shit. And my mom was fussing at my daddy. Like, he was into that shit. Like, we used to watch black and white shit. Like, going to Blockbuster was an event. We going to get some shit. He gonna read the, he gonna read the cover. You know how we get frustrated? Well, I, I can speak for myself. Like, I get frustrated trying to pick a new Netflix movie. Where I'm reading this shit like, nah, this shit sound dumb. Think about standing in Blockbuster for an hour, reading through label after label, mm-hmm. trying to see the premise of a movie to see if you should spend your hard earned four or five dollars to rent this movie. Yep. Like it used to be. You ever crazy. seen um you ever seen Prisoners with Hugh Jackman and Jacob Jalen Hall? Can't say that. That is that is a great movie that I never watch again. It's about like a fucking a little kid being abducted and shit, man. Mm. That shit good. It's a horror movie. That shit scared the fuck out of me. Like it's not. It's more <laughs> like suspense, but it ain't like a okay. horror movie. But that shit be like, god damn it! Like you be on the edge of your seat. Like where the fuck is this little girl? Like who got the little girl? So yeah, it's a fucking horror movie for a nigga that got a daughter for sure, or a kid. <laughs> gotcha. Period. Like that gotcha. shit's fucked up. But I, it was a really good movie, and Christmas. I never watched it again. I told myself shit was good as fuck. I watch it. If it fucked you up like that, I'll watch it. Yeah, that shit good. Like, cause it's funny, cause it was this white dude that I, uh, the white dude that I used to work with and shit. And I was like, yo, and I had just watched, I was like, you ever seen a movie called Prisons? He was like, fuck yeah, I have. He was like, that shit was <laughs> fuck fucking <yeah>. terrible. <laughs> he was like, it was a good ass fucking movie, but god damn, man, I just had a kid. <laughs> like, I'm right. watch that shit. I'm shit watch, good. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna watch that shit. I'm always looking for a horror movie, but horror movies today are so fucking trash. Yeah, it's more suspense than horror, so. Gotcha. But it's still going to get you, get you racing. Gotcha. All right. Well, you ready to get into some litter shit? Yeah, let's get it. All right. Litter shit is our pop culture segment where we talk about all the fuck shit on your timeline. Um, did you indulge in anything today, B? I'm smoke weed. I'm good. Smoke a little bud. Um, I actually 
drank earlier and then sobered up and now I'm back again. I was uh celebrating a, a birthday uh today. So uh did that earlier today and sobered up and now I'm drinking uh vodka tonic. Uh peach vodka tonic. Let me know if y'all tried out that peach that any type of flavored vodka and tonic. Cause it tastes like soda to me. Um but yeah, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have any, uh, Meg updates for y'all. I think we kind of cracked the case now. So I don't have any Meg updates for y'all. Uh, however, um, we have spoke about Tahiri Jose, uh, on here a few episodes back. She's on currently on, um, uh, boot camp, marriage boot camp on, on VH1, uh, with Vado and she got into a domestic violence situation. Um, and I've been watching that play out cause I watched marriage boot camp. Um, uh, but because she was in this situation, I guess that has opened the door for people to constantly ask her questions in regards to domestic violence and things of that nature. Um, so she was recently on, uh, Hollywood Unlocked. Uh, with Jason Lee, and she referred to I her hate rel- that guy. <laughs> Why you hate Jason? I just hate him. He's like just a messy fucking. He is a messy bitch ass nigga. He is. He is. Uh, but hey, if you're gonna be messy, at least figure out how to turn it into money, and that's what that's the fuck true. he did. Yeah. Uh, but I get 100 percent what you're saying because he messy as fuck. But um, so Jason Lee, messy Betty, um, acts to Harry. Um, about, you know, domestic violence and, and things of that nature. Um, and Joe Budden's name came up. Now, for backstory for you guys, uh, Tahiri and Joe Budden, uh, were dating back in 2005. This was like 15 years ago. And, um, I don't know how many years they actually dated, but to bring you up to more current, they were also on Love and Hip Hop New York together. Um, Tahiri was, they were on like the first couple seasons. I think it was the third and like the fourth season. Joe proposed in the middle of Times Square and shit. She turned him down. Uh, and then they came back together on, on the 10th season. Um, of love and hip hop. And, you know, her and Joe seemed like they had like this kind of relationship where they were exes, but, you know, they were being cordial and being cool with each other and, and kind of building from there. Um, but, you know, he asked her uh, about that relationship and, uh, she stated that she had been beaten by Joe. And they had a very violent relationship. Um, she said that that relationship left her with fractured ribs, uh, a broken nose. Um, and she, she basically said that he, he's pushed her down the flight of stairs. Like it was a bunch of like crazy shit. Um, that she said she went through with Joe and she said that Joe is unpredictable. Uh, and when asked about, you know, her being with him on love and hip hop, she basically said that she has a lot of individuals to support. And what I took that as like, listen, I got to make this money. So kind of like with the Brandy and Monica thing, if I got to get, get, you know, go along to get along, then basically that's what, you know, I'll do. She said that Joe woke her up and pulled her out the bed by her ankles and like all of this shit. And, you know, she would go to the doctors and, and lie and say that, you know, I walked into a door and all that type of shit that, you know, abuse women stay. She said it started off as verbal abuse, then, then became emotional. And then that continued and turned physical. Um, and she also said, you know, she still kind of fears for her safety, which was very interesting to me. She said, but you know, she stays quiet. She says she's, she forgives him. Uh, but she says that Joe is unpredictable. So she's, she doesn't fully trust him, but she definitely said that she forgives him. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about Joe and I think that, you know, uh, we both listen to Joe and we hear Joe's hot takes and, you know, we, we just heard Joe go on a whole rant about, you know, Tory Lanes and shit like that. Is this, is this shocking to you or how did you feel about this information? 
as it relates to like Joe, like. I mean, Joe's had, you know, they've said things about Esther claimed that she, you know, he he hit her and shit. and Made her he lose got, her baby and shit. Yeah, but he got cleared of court from the shit. Like, he didn't, you know, from apparently from him getting arrested or whatever, he didn't, nothing happened from there. So, I don't know, man. Um, you know, she, Joe used to be on drugs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Really bad. So, yeah. um, I can't, again, I don't put past, nothing past nobody. Yeah. Um, you know, and Joe was definitely a... Uh, and, uh, he still is a wild motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? In terms of like things that he says and his temper and, you know, his passion and whatever else you want to fucking describe it as. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, if that happens, you know, that shit, that shit is, uh, horrible. However, um, we've seen that to hear, he seems to be a little, um, a little feisty yourself. So I'm sure that, um, if, if it was no, there's no excuse for him to put his hands on a woman. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure she probably put his hands. They had a volatile relationship is what I'm basically alluding to. So, uh, one would think that, you know, they were probably fighting, you know, somebody say something and then somebody still off and then, you know, it just goes from there. So, which is not healthy at all. I don't mm-hmm. recommend that shit at all. If you have to, Toxic. I'm trying to love you. I don't want to have to fight you. That shit is weird. Um, yeah. I don't fight women. That shit is weird. Um, and I don't want a, a woman shouldn't be fighting a man. Like if you're in a relationship, you should keep your hands to yourself outside of like loving that person. So yeah, uh, that's my stance on it. You know yeah, I think I think that um, you know, I am a firm believer of where there's smoke, there's fire. And, you know, I say that all the time, just in my daily work. Like if we've, if we've heard about this person doing this multiple times, uh, by different people, something is going on. And, you know, it's whether you can, whether you can prove it, you know, or not. And, you know, I am a woman and I have a tendency to, you know, believe women, um, when, when they say certain things and, and, and certain women, I'm not going to even lie. Like even when we talked about, um, you know, fucking, uh, Selena Powell and those type women, I, I, I can honestly say like, I'm not, uh, infallible where I'm just like believing everybody because it, unfortunately, you know, people do make up stories, but when you have situations like this, where you're hearing multiple stories from multiple women, I'm just like, wow, because Joe is so passionate when it comes to this topic, right? Like over the years of his podcast and, you know, you've been following Joe way longer than I have. He always seems to have a very um, adamant stance on shit like this. Like this shit is crazy. Like fuck that nigga. Like, you know, whatever, whatever. He just went off on Tory Lanez about what he did to Meg and, you know, all of these things. And it's just one of those things to me where it's just like, damn, you can't trust shit that come out of nobody mouth, bro. Like you can't trust shit that come out of no, nobody's mouth. Like you hear people being passionate about a subject and they beating bitches. Um, Joe was in fact on drugs, you know, Joe, Joe has a very lengthy history with drugs. So I'm sure, you know, that plays a part, but you know, one of the things that Tahiri said as well is that like, it's just hard when you hear a person out here lying, you know what I'm saying? Like she hear this nigga and like, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine having an ex that I can't get away from. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to hear their name. I'm going to see their show. I'm going to do, you know, whatever. Joe, Joe is, you know, Joe's making moves out here. Um, maybe he's still making moves. I'm unsure. I heard of, uh, we talked about his, uh, his Spotify deal and things like that. And him being, uh, very, I have this thing about Joby and I think like you, you, you may be able to give me some clarity on Joe and I, I, I'm digressing a little bit from the subject at hand, but that, that doesn't make it invalid with Tahiri. Um, but I, I heard what Joe said about Spotify, right? And what I take from that is the same thing that we do every day, right? I think that Joe is one of these guys who has never probably really had like a, a real nine to five for a long time to understand how it works, right? Your your job, you probably make your job and save your job so much fucking money. 
right? And your reward for that may be some type of bonus if you're if you're in a bonus type reward system at your job or, you know, a compensation system uh, at your job. However, you signed up for this job. These are the terms and conditions of your employment. Like, just because we make a lot of money doesn't mean we're sharing that shit with you. And what I take from Joe is like, he go into these contracts and he thinks like, oh, if I do a good job, they're going to share the wealth with me. And that's not how it works. Right. Like, that's not how it works. So I don't get, so Joe Budden is, is, is upset with, with Spotify, right? And I can understand theoretically why he's upset. He's made them a lot of money. You know, they make it X, Y, Z money. But at the end of the day, this is the contract that you signed. Like yeah. he, he, he always has issues with his employers, uh, complex, like all of these employers. And then he goes on his rants about his employers and he's under the misconception that if I do a good job, they're going to reward me. No, nigga, the reward for good work is more work <laughs> or you negotiating a better contract. Right. So I understand where based on the, the, the events that he told us about. So he's ending his, uh, for, for people who listen to spy gas, like, like, Joe Button has has been very instrumental in in podcasting. I would say that. Like Joe has been very instrumental in podcasting and Joe is upset because he's made all of this money for Spotify. And Spotify is basically not sharing the wealth. Um he went on to say like uh you know uh he's made them or their show has made them almost nine figures. And he feels like he should get some of that. But I feel like at this point in time, like, nigga, you got a big enough following. You know enough about the business. Just get your own fucking app and monetize that shit yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you getting upset about some shit. They don't give a fuck. Like, they're not about to share the wealth. That's why they enter you into a contract <laughs> to make sure that they're only obligated to give you what's in this contract. Right. What What was your thoughts on the on on that? I want to hear. Like, did you feel like Joe was in the right, or um, how do you feel I about mean, the contract? You know, everything's negotiable. So, I mean, yeah. You know, you get to you get to certain like from what he said that they didn't honor certain things. Like there were bonuses that came extremely late and shit like that. So if 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 shit is not going as it should contractually, then obviously you have you know have you have leverage to 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 force people's hand one way or the other. So yeah, um, you know if things weren't going as they should have, then I would certainly you know that that's going to sully a taste in somebody's mouth. So um, I mean, yeah, I think I think I think it, I think it served to purposes like i think it did a lot for spotify and i think it also did a lot for joe budden you know what yeah. i mean like having having that re that reach um you know and, and spot yeah. but honestly i don't know what all the spotify did you know because i was listening to joe before but i mean and yeah his youtube his youtube following you know like grew immensely and shit so i mean joe's just he's just you know he's polarizing like he's really good at what he does you know what i'm saying and then the cast and the crew and all that so i mean he and is then you know he's gonna blow up sooner or later yeah, I mean he's gonna do yeah. some shit. Like that's it. Joe gonna Joe. Like if nothing else, Joe gonna Joe. Like and I I that I mean if nothing else you can appreciate that about him. Like he's gonna be himself, like and, and that shit is going to something's gonna happen. Some funky shit's gonna happen one way or the other. And um you just gotta be along for the ride to watch it. But um, you know, I I don't know, man. Uh as a podcaster myself, you know what I'm saying? Um I can only imagine getting like millions and millions of dollars for shit that I'm, I'm speaking, you know what yes, I mean? Like yes. I can only imagine that. That's great. That's a blessing. <laughs> if Fuck you yeah. get paid. Yeah. And then like, you know, and he, and I mean, for not for nothing, he revolutionized the game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's, he's revolutionized the game. Like doing two podcasts a week, niggas won't doing that. Uh, you know, and, and having, having the contact and having the stream. And, and, so, and, and the black market, I don't think people were doing that, but there are podcasts that yeah, happen every day. Yeah, like some I mean, people. Yeah, some niggas do daily shit. Yeah, shit, some niggas like, do daily terms, podcasts. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of like, I guess, for, in the for culture. Black podcasts and shit like yep. that. 
Yeah, he's I pretty agree. much like he's revolutionized that shit to the point where everybody wants a podcast now. Shit, even though Charlamagne was doing his shit prior to or whatever, but you know Charlamagne has a radio, but Joe like he's he kind of single handedly like changed the podcast game and made everybody kind of want to get a podcast. Like, Charlamagne has a podcast, but Charlamagne's numbers are nowhere near even like the top ten. Oh yeah, podcast yeah. right yeah. now, black I mean, podcast. He said he does like three hundred thousand. I think he said like he was like they do three hundred thousand a week, which is, I mean, that's nothing to shake a stick at. But yeah, um, you know what I mean. But it could be more. But he's he's a, he can't invest all his time into a pod when he's on the radio for you know every day. So I get that too. But I mean, shit, like I said, three hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand listens a, a week is fucking amazing. Like, you know I would love three hundred thousand listens because yeah, yeah. you know so, <laughs> that equal dollars. Like streams equal dollars. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. And, I mean, it's and, the ad space. And the, and the, and the, and the podcast game is so skewed. I, I felt Joe on a lot of things that he was saying, like about, you know, how things are skewed and things like that. Like podcasts have been out for a very long time, but podcasts have just really taken off in the last three, four years. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, so you have homegrown podcasts and shit like that. Like, you know, we have like our, our podcast and, and we've grown and, and we've grown our, our listenership grass, grassroots, you know what I'm saying? But sure. you have podcasts that come out with millions of dollars backing it already. Yeah. You have corporations sure. putting out podcasts. You have, you know, uh, Viacom, you have, yeah, you have all of those <laughs> people putting out podcasts. And when you have people with a following that comes and they already have a million million people with them they have 10 million followers or 20 million followers or whatever the case that you know what they have like it skews the game so even when when joe budden was talking about it joe budden was a small fish to a fucking um what's my bitch name the the, the white bitch that get way too much credit for being funny uh amy schumer uh you know he talked about how amy schumer podcast was going to be on Spotify and was on Spotify and he said that it bombed I've never listened to an Amy Schumer podcast uh, Amy Schumer name always comes up <laughs> came up with Monique you know it's always Amy Schumer against some black person I don't find Amy Schumer funny but again that's just may not be my my bag you know what I'm saying of I can't relate to her life for her to make me laugh so you know it, it it's hard out here it's hard and I understand what Joe feels like when he, when he wants these things. But if you just have worked a regular job, you need to know that you are a cog in this machine. And just cause we make extra money off the work that you do, don't mean we're going to give you extra money mm-hmm. unless it was specifically baked into the contract and when the things that Joe Budden was talking about, he was like, they offered them this or they asked for time off. They didn't, He didn't say that it was built into the contract. He said, oh, we did 900 above. We looking for some bonuses. No bonuses came. And bonuses were baked into that contract, but Joe Budden would have his lawyer talking to Spotify. He wouldn't just be ranting if that right. shit was baked into a legal contract. So I think like after complex, Joe Bunn needs to understand that this is how the system works with everything. Or you have to have your own shit. Right. If somebody is investing in you, just like with the music business, if you get in a million dollars, they probably making $20 million, yeah. if not a hundred million dollars. So your choice is you can have this machine behind you and take the amount of money or the earnings that they feel like you should have or that you're able to negotiate or you have to get your own shit. And I feel like he's at a point right now where he could get his own shit if some yeah, scandal yeah. does not bring yeah, him I down. Mean, that's, 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 that's what, I mean, that's what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? After this shit, he's going to be everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, the phone ain't stop ringing. You know what I'm saying? And fucking, yeah. um, you know, like, he got a tour following to the point where he's making, you know, millions of dollars on the tour that, you know, uh, whenever that shit gets back rolling, motherfuckers fuck with bro. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And, and Maul and Roy, like they have a, their, their ensemble is, is, is it's pretty spot on in terms of what they provide. So, um, you know, we'll see, man, you know, we'll see. So here he talked about us, you know, I guess being around Joe and shooting with Joe, like for, for the money. Could you see, 
Could you see yourself sucking it up with somebody that caused harm to you for the bread? Like, I don't know. I it depends been, on what the harm was. Been, yeah, it is. And it depends on how hurting I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It depends on what I got going on. So, you know. Nothing is worth never. your mental health. That's me. true. I agree. But you never know where where you're at in life. Like That's to, true. To a degree of finance. Finance is, is a part of mental health. Like, if you ain't got no fucking money, you fucked up and shit ain't. Factory factory. Yeah, and you got shit going on you're going to have to make a conscious decision to, you know you, you have to put your morals to the back in the back seat and you know pray about right. it later or something you know what i mean because hey. i always say as long as you got a vagina you got a job uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean like it, it you you're right like it depends on what situation that you know situation that you're in um and i think like you know somebody like to hear might be used to living a certain type of lifestyle regardless of what that lifestyle is that you know she got to take her bags where they come, you know. Um, again, I've never been in, a, in in that type of situation. I don't know if I could be in that type of situation, but you know, she's she's constantly in it, and I can see when she's talking about certain things, like she's genuinely hurt. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like why keep putting yourself through like these toxic situations for money, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But again, like you said, you never know until you're in that situation, you know, basically what you would tolerate and what you would do. So, you know, I, I just want to say to, cause to hear you, old, like to hear you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like Joe 40. So she 42, 43, like, you know what I mean? Like she's no she spring 42. chicken. Damn. Yeah. I mean, so for real, still like, bad as a bitch though. She that don't mean she got to take no shit. Cause she, 43. yeah, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I'm just saying, but like when you ain't really got like a solid foundation or some shit where you can like transition and, you know what I'm saying? Make a pivot to somewhere else. Like you got to kind of go for what you know. Yeah, I mean, Tahiri is the is 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 known for being a video vixen and all of these types of things, and you know her body is her asset. You yeah. know what I'm saying? She's gonna fall off at the water. Yeah, so you gotta phase. get something. You gotta get something going. Listen, don't rely on on your looks. You you gotta have some other things out there. You know, even like when you were talking about like athletes and shit like that. Like you can get hurt any day. You, you're gonna get older. And you're going to get not not saying that you're you're ne necessarily going to uh, deteriorate like because there are older women out here that 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 is killing for sure. Um, but you got to have something else that doesn't rely on like your looks and shit like that. Like you think about like a Melissa Ford who was in a whole accident and was stapled all the way to fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like she couldn't rely on her looks. She's still fine though. Shout out to her fucking surgeon and shit. Yeah, she she does like radio and uh, podcasts and like shit like that. So I definitely would say diversify. But if you are a woman and you are in a domestic uh, situation, like try to find some help, like it, it, as much as you can. One of the characters on P Valley is uh, in a domestic situation, and she fine as hell with a fucking whack ass white boy, like. That, you don't have to, sis, you don't have to do this. <laughs> it's, it's some niggas out here that don't love nothing more than tricking. Like, just to have a pretty girl on their arm. Like, y'all, y'all, y'all don't have to take that, man. But, um, Joe Tahiri, uh, and this whole shit is what little shit. Uh, it's all lit. I don't know. It's just too much going on. Yeah, it, it's shit. Uh, it's shit to me. Um, I don't like domestic violence. I don't like violence, period. But, you know, domestic violence is just something different. And, you know, it's different when you're looking into a, a woman's eyes and you can see, like, their hurt come back. You know what I mean? Like, you can you can see that shit. And I'm just like, damn, like, how can certain people look at certain people that ain't good actresses? You know what I'm saying? And not and I see that shit build back up. But on, on a happier note, uh... Nisi Nash came out of her, <laughs> came out the quarantine with a whole wife, not even a girlfriend, but a whole wife. Uh, Nisi Nash, who y'all know from a bunch of, uh, uh, things, um, Claus is her most recent thing. Uh, Nisi Nash used to have the flower in her hair all the time. Um, but, uh, she revealed on social media that she, has gotten married to singer Jessica Betts. 
Um, she announced on her Instagram, uh, Miss Carol Denise Betts. First of all, I didn't know Nisi Nash name was Carol. I wouldn't claim Carol either if my name was Carol. Uh, but uh her name is Denise, so that's where Nisi comes from. Um, posted a picture of them at their wedding, holding hands, smiling. Um, so Nisi Nash, uh, we don't know exactly when they met. However, uh Jessica Betts was on the 2005 show. I knew she looked familiar. I didn't know where I knew her from, but she was on uh Missy Elliott's Road to Stardom. In 2005, it was a, a talent reality show. Uh, I don't know what she's been doing in the meantime. I'm assuming she's just still been doing music and, and things of that nature, but she was on Claws. Uh, I think it's a TNT show. Uh, Nisi Nash's show Claws in the second season finale where, uh, she played like a wedding singer or whatever on there and there is a clip from 2018 or a post from 2018 um where she is singing to Nishi, Nisi Nash and uh singing on her gu- guitar uh one of the songs that Nisi Nash I guess really really likes um Nisi Nash was still married to her husband Jay Tucker uh they were married in 2011 their divorce was final in March this March of 2020 mm-hmm. Right. They filed for separation, though, in October 2018. But the divorce was filed in March. This is Nisi Nash's third marriage. And Nisi Nash has uh has three kids. Um, Nisi Nash is 50 years old. I can only assume that uh, her wife is younger. Um, Probably a lot younger than her, maybe at least 10 years or so. Um, but I, there wasn't a lot of information online about her besides like, um, you know, the 2005 thing and all that. Um, is this shocking for you for DC Dash? Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't know she was gay. So, um, <laughs> I didn't, you know, I mean, I didn't know, I don't follow too much DC Nash, so I didn't know really too much about her, but True. I mean, I know she was married and shit, but. I yeah, didn't, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So, um, yeah, I mean, when I saw the, I, the picture originally, I was like, is that a dude? And then I was yeah. like, oh, it's not, it's a girl. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> well, congratulations. Continue to scroll. <laughs> it, it, it was, it was interesting to me. No, nothing really shocked me. Uh, my theory is that I, I, it, it, it shocks me more when I find out, you know, some dude is gay versus some woman. I feel like women are feeling people. And if it, if it feels, if it feels good, they pretty much down for it. I don't think that women have, um, as a whole, of course, I, I, I don't think that women have the walls maybe that men have as far as what they like and, you know, things of that nature. If it, if it, if it makes them feel good, I feel like women are, you know, like spaghetti noodles, <laughs> like they straight into they get wet. So it's not very shocking for me. The fact that she's 50 and is dating or was dating this woman on the show was interesting because I just saw Nisi Nash, uh, maybe like two months ago or something. And she was, uh, on Zoom or something like something like that, maybe live or something with with um fucking uh what's the other black lady name oh fuck Sherry Shepard. She was on there with Sherry Shepard and Sherry Shepard was trying to hook her up with some white man, some famous white man. And she was like, I can see you with like a white man. And and Nisi Nash was like, uh, that's what you can see. Like da 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 da. And they going through this whole thing. And then you shock you 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 pop up with a whole uh. A whole wife. My theory is that Nisi Nash cheated on her husband with her. Timelines overlap too much for me. I I I think that's what happened with that. And because you freshly divorced in like March, do, do you know? Do you know any women in like your personal life that like you've known them to be married and have kids and shit like that, and then they have like a whole girlfriend or a whole wife or some shit after all that shit done? No, nah, I don't. Not that I know of anyway. Yeah, uh, I know. 
hurts a lot. <laughs> I know more. <laughs> I know more than uh probably the, the the average person. Um I thought that it was very interesting. And then on the flip side of Nisi Nash's situation, MC Light filed for a divorce oh, after okay. three years. Was she married to a man? Yes. Oh, okay. That's MC Light getting married to a man was more shocking to me than Nisi Nash marrying a woman. Hmm. Yeah, did, I mean, yeah. Did you always think MC Light was gay? Yeah, I know I, mean, I did. Definitely was a tomboy for sure. That's the difference between tomboy and gay. She gave me gay. MC Light, uh, Queen Latifah is gay. Like, yeah. I always thought, you know what I mean? Like, so it was shocking to me when she met this man on, uh, match.com or something. Like, she met her husband on, like, a fucking dating website and yeah. married this nigga. And now three years later, like, you divorced. Okay. And she like, just live your fucking truth. Like, it, it, you ain't got to mess with these niggas. If you don't want to mess with these niggas, you also don't have to tell people your business. You can just mess with them and mind your mind your business and they mind their business. Like, right. when I saw them together, I was like, y'all look odd. This don't even look right. But hey, it's your life. I feel like everybody should live whatever life they feel comfortable with, regardless of how you live it, long as everybody is of age and consenting and willing. And that's all that matters. But that was super shocking to me. Um, but I guess I'll say, you know, congratulations to Nishi Nash. If you're happy, do your thing. Uh, sound like Jessica probably had a come up. Shout out to you for the come up on the bag. <laughs> Cause Nisi Nash got a little bit of change. Uh, is this little shit? It's lit. Man, it's lit. Hey, love who you love. Love who you love. And don't let nobody else tell you different. Um, I'm going to wrap that up. I'm not going to even go into uh, Bruh from Hot 97. Um, You ready to give out some advice? Sure. All right. All right. Um, We're going to go into Ain't Shit and Two Cents. Ain't Shit and Two Cents is our listener uh, letter segment um, where we give advice to people who clearly don't care about taking advice from people who drinking, people who smoking. We about to give out some more advice today. A one advice. Uh, the letter today, B, uh, it says, I feel like this is somebody I know because they said hi, DC Fresh and B Hill. Or it could be somebody that just follows me on Instagram. But they say hi, DC Fresh and B Hill. Um, and this letter is from KCW. Uh, it says, my ex and I broke up basically two weeks before the pandemic was deemed a real thing. So basically, I've gone all of these months with no sex. I didn't have time to recruit a new boo. You can't be out here trying to find some new new during a global virus. Uh, But I can only do so much, me and my hand, (laughs) which leads me to my question. Even though my ex and I still agree that we are wrong for each other, I am entertaining the idea of sex buddies. I have not asked her, but I'm pretty sure she would be down. Do y'all think it's a good idea to backslide, even if it's for convenience sake and saving the world? (laughs) And that is from KCW. Yeah, man. Fuck it, man. Life's short, man. Like, if you want to have sex, just fucking have sex. Like, if you can try to detach emotions, go for it. If not, then deal with that later. But, I mean... The world is in it. It's a lot going on. <laughs> the world gotta, is in the facts. I mean, like, it's a lot going on, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a lot going on. So you should at least, like, sexual sexual tension would, you know, be a great release. So fuck it, man. If you don't want to feel like going out loud and trying to get some new dick or pussy or whatever it is that you enjoy, like, you know, uh, it's nothing wrong with doubling back, you know, and just kind of set the parameters if you can, you know what I'm saying? And then. You know, I mean, that's what, you know, it's a, it sounds good in theory, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, fuck it. I mean, if nothing else, fuck it, try it once. And if, if the shit ain't right, then dip out. But if it's all right, shit, it's all right. I would say, uh, under normal circumstances, I would just be like, uh, it really depends on how y'all broke up and how y'all emotional. And if y'all just going to get back into the same bullshit, but desperate times calls for desperate measures. 
I feel like we're living in a time in which nothing is standard anymore. Um, I say that if you can do it without getting into the old bullshit, which is going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard, especially if you're not having sex with anyone else. You haven't had sex with anyone else. It's very hard. I mean, it's very easy for couples to fall back into that feeling of comfort. Right. Um, we've, I, I, I'm sure I can probably speak for everybody within earshot of this podcast. We all have been in a situation at least once where, you know, we were trying to break up with someone or we've broken up with someone and fell back into old habits and, and things like that. I think this is a lot easier to have, and I'll just speak on my end. I think it's a lot easier to have sex. Uh, with someone that you have no ties to emotionally uh, versus someone that you loved at one point in time and, and y'all just broke up. So you probably still love them. You just can't deal with them, which I understand that as well. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's very easy to get back into old habits, but I would, I would say, listen, this pandemic been real long. And I say, if you can do it and do it safely and when I say safely, I mean like emotional damage, like that you might put yourself through. I don't know why y'all broke up, but if you can do it safely, I say, hey, fuck it. Go with it. Go with it. Yeah. Unconventional times calls for unconventional measures. And like okay. you said, you can't get no new. You can't get no new whatever you into. Um, assume, I don't know. It says Casey. I'm assuming it's a female, but Casey can also be a male name. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I say do it. I, yeah, I, I, I say do it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Turn up. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know how that shit go. Cause it could turn out real messy. Either way, we're not taking responsibility for how this turns out unless it turns out well. Yeah. Go for it. Fuck something. <laughs> Fuck something. That's, <laughs> that, 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 that's the, uh, that, that's the word of the day. F some. Fuck some. Yeah. Shut up, my nigga Dion. That was my homeboy. He used to say that shit. God bless his soul. Like, drink something. Fuck something. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. buddies, yeah. Drink you something. Fuck up. something. Do something. Do whatever make you happy. Like, the world is ending. If it don't make you happy, don't do it. Unless it's like going to work and you got to pay your bills. Right. You got to do that in, until you find another avenue. And uh, again, if you, all, if you got a vagina, you got to pay your <laughs> It's just what you want to do. Fair. But Casey, uh, let us know. L let us know uh, how that works out for you. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you, bro. I'm rooting for you, sis. Whoever you are, I I'm rooting for you. Man, be here rooting for you. We want you to get your nut off without a lot of uh, strings attached. So shout out to uh, Casey. And let us know. Let us know. Um, if y'all want some of this A1 advice, write into the Ain't Shit Show. Uh, at gmail.com. That's the X where the I would be and your letter may get read on the show. You ready to wrap this baby up with some free smoke, free smoke? Yeah, let's do it. Free smoke is our uh, segment where we talk about anything we want pretty much. Uh, it can be hot button issues. It can be personal topics, politics to petty. Anything is open in free smoke. So we've had a free, we've, we've had a, a, a free smoke that we wanted to do for like weeks and like other things got in the way. Um, and it was more so in relation to like Cardi and the whole WAP thing and uh, politicians in America going crazy because WAP is so nasty. Like, and we all looking around like, what the fuck's so nasty about it? Like, we've been listening to shit like that. Like, what the fuck? Right. Um, so uh me and B Hill wanted to talk about um this is this segment is basically about music. And the first topic related to music is about songs that are nasty, deemed a little bit sexually explicit. Um, and I wanted us to kind of talk about some of those songs that we feel like are worse or at least the same as what, like, wet as pussy, like, just seems very straight to the point to me. Uh, what song, what songs, were, first of all, were you surprised about the reaction to what? Um, I mean, it's the internet. 
Like everybody just does shit. Like nobody really gives a fuck. They just be bored for that day or those two or three days. And then shit goes and people get fixated on certain shit. And then they just move on like they've done to this point. So no, I wasn't not every, nothing surprises me with the internet. Like everybody just fucking, it's so weird. Like I'm so like nonchalant about mad shit that be on the internet. Cause it's just like, in 20 minutes that shit will be gone and nobody mm-hmm. will give a fuck about it so it's so mm-hmm. fleeting that i really don't give shit much of any much of any of my attention and i'm really here for the internet just to laugh like outside of that i don't give a fuck like if i i mean obviously i certain things obviously move me when i hear chadwick boseman passes and white boy kills people but you know like you know it is it's just the fucking internet like that shit moves so fucking fast and you know shit has no staying power i'm um, my mind has gone to that point, unfortunately. So, whatever. I feel like this one was a little bit interesting for me because it wasn't us. It, oh, yeah. was, it the, was the whites. It was the white people whites. trying to, and, and I feel like it's only because of Cardi's political relationships. Sure. Her political connects with Joe Biden and, you know, Cardi, Cardi, shout out to Cardi. Cardi uses her powers for good to encourage people to vote and shit like that while she's saying, you know, <laughs> you ain't get a, get a bucket and a mop for this wet ass pussy. But she's also saying like, vote and be cognizant about what's going on in, in your, your neighborhoods and arrest the cops that shot Breonna Taylor and, you know, all of those things. So I think they have a thing for Cardi right now. Like Cardi's on the radar because again we listen to music that's way worse white people have music that are is way worse uh yeah. than that so y'all are the same people that's like my rights my fifth amendment and all of that thing and, and until somebody say some shit y'all don't like and then it's like oh shut that shit down however y'all have a fucking sweet potato colored nigga that go on tv and say whatever he fucking wants every single day Every right. day, say what the fuck he want. The same guy goes and say, grab him by the pussy. The same guy that says that he could get any woman he wants because he has money and they really don't matter. Like, we're talking about the y'all the same people. Y'all coming after Cardi for a song. But one of the songs that came to mind for me, B. Hill, have you ever heard of a song by Marvin Cease called Candy Liquor? Uh, it's like a liquor house song, right? I never quantified it that way, but yes, I would say it's a liquor house song. It's an old song that my grandma and them listened to. Yeah, I think I heard that shit. Pretty sure. There you go. And I'll lick you up. <laughs> I'll lick you down. Come on, baby. I want to lick you all around. Yeah, we, I think I'm pretty sure I heard that. We were young singing this song. Had no idea what that song meant. Right. Like, we had no idea what that Man, song that meant. Shit, it's a million of them fucking songs, bro. Like, a million of them fucking songs. Like, Bump and Grind. I was Bump and Grind, yeah. All yep. of nine talking about singing Bump and Grind. You know what I'm saying? Like, great did song. You, did you, so like, some nasty songs you sing, you know that they're nasty songs. Like, even as a kid, you might have some inkling, like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't say this or maybe I shouldn't do this. But there are also songs where you had no fucking idea that that's what they was talking about. Downtown, SWV. Oh, had yeah, no idea sure. that's what that was about. Yeah, me, me And I feel like I was like, shit, when did Downtown come out? Early 90s? I felt like I was at least like 11 or 12 or something when Downtown came out. I, uh, I had no idea uh, that know. it was about I mean, getting maybe some maybe first or second album for them. So they came out early in the game. They did. They did. Early nineties. Um, what other songs? What other songs made your list be? Um, I got uh, "Pussy Pumper" number one by Ti. Um, How that Pussy, song go? I'm "Pussy Pumper" number one. Him and Pharrell was on his first album. Shit is oh. amazing. What's your name? You never heard that song? It's amazing. It's a beautiful song. I need to go back and listen to it. Maybe I'm it's your Pussy number one. That shit fire. That's all. I'm serious. Yeah. Him and Pharrell. Uh, SWB downtown came out in 1992. Sound about so, right. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like um, it. Pussy Pumper number one, getting some head by fucking Shauna. Um, getting, getting, I was getting some head. Yes. Arkin that was Nelly, my shit. Put it in your mouth. Put um, it in your mouth. So many fucking Lollipop songs. by Lil Wayne. Lollipop by Lil Wayne, fucking Fantasy by Ludacris. Um, Peaches and Cream. Freaky Girl, fucking. Very Freaky Girl. 
Uh, mad mama. Shit, bro. Like, you can just go back forever and, and ever. Like, you can go back to fucking some, it's mad shit, man. Like, I didn't uh, know Rain by SWV was some nasty shit. Mm hmm. Yeah. I know done. it was about getting nutted on. Mm hmm. Yeah. Bro, I never knew that. Yeah. Milkshake um, by Khalees. Yeah. That, um, it was a song on Neo album that I can't remember. It was, um, Damn, what's the name of that fucking song? I can't remember it off the top of my head. It just came Neo to me. Neo got a lot of them. That shit was Mirror wild. Mirror by Neo is one of my favorite songs. You said what? Mirror by ne- Neo is one yeah, of my favorite Mira. songs. Yeah, Mirror. Yep. Love that shit was nasty. That was a fun. That was a great album. Neo for that was crazy. That was a great song. That was oh, a great shit, song. That's mad shit, man. Um, like I said, put it in your mouth. Um, All the Lil' Kim. Yeah, hardcore. The whole hardcore album. Um, uh, all the fun. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah, was fire. Um, that shit was mad sexual. Um, Mad E versus was mad sexual. Something nigga talk- dick or something. Yeah, it's been mad shit, bro. Like, like, <laughs> damn, I love them strippers, all type of shit. Becky um, by Plies. Yeah, Becky, fucking, um, please excuse Pop my hands. It. Which one? Uh, please excuse my. First of all, I just want to say when Plies first came out and Plies got really, really popular, I used to, I was like, yo, this is like audio porn. Like yeah. all the shit Plies used to rap shit about with, um, was like tank. super you nasty. Think about me. That was that yep. shit. That shit was fire. <laughs> that shit was hard. Tank smoked that. Niggas don't know Tank. That was Tank on the hook, but that hey, shit was fire. Fucking with me by Tank. It's my shit. Still, tank I think that song shit. came up like three years ago or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Tank got mad nasty shit. It's mad, man, niggas been talking about Listen, fucking since niggas can talk about fucking. Since, niggas, since fucking. niggas can talk about fucking, they even, um, when I was doing the, the, the research for this section, uh, weeks ago, they was talking about this song from 1935 called Shave Em Dry by Lucille Bogan. And it was yeah. a blues song. And it's That's like, I got man. nipples on my titties. <laughs> big as the end of my thumb. I got something between my legs that'll make a dead man come. Nigga, what? That is nasty. We've been talking about fucking fucking is the one the one, oldest sport. Yeah, man. Motherfuckers been fucking nigga. That's how we got here. Motherfuckers was fucking in the sixteen hundreds. Nigga uh, fucking on the uh, middle passage. Somehow some way. <laughs> nigga got some pussy on the middle passage. I'm sure somebody That's did, but if if you got Listen, you a wild nigga if you been kidnapped in your dick hard. Hey. <laughs> you you kidnapped but you, you look to, the, to the left and you see a titty and like shit. Yeah, uh, 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 oh my god, that is so crazy. For real, man. That yeah. is crazy. Even like the most popular songs right now, like I was listening to music like after WAP came out and it was like all this controversy and I was just listening to the songs that I listened to. I was like. 70% of my music sound like this. Like, yeah. 70% of, like, even R&B songs, like, everybody's talking about sex. Everybody's talking about getting some head, giving some head. Jill Scott giving head, getting head. Yeah, Marsha Ambrose just giving. Fucking, uh, Chris Brown, Take You Down. Take You Down. Um, one of my favorite songs right now is Get That Bread, Get That Head, Then Leave. <laughs> hey, then Leave. That song go off. Pussy Talk by fucking City Girls. That go off. Mulatto, fucking, I throw that ass back to see if he gonna catch it. Smash it Ain't man. athletic, but it's tennis for the necklace. Like, what? Like, give me that Trina. Go with me. Yes. Motherfucking. Yeah, girl, that shit was fine. Just <laughs> give me that pussy. Oh, oh, oh. Bro, like I said, we all oh, in man, it. Like, you don't want it, bitch. You know you want it bad as I do. Why, hey, why, get loose. Hey, that, that was fun. a good song. Where yeah, Webby yeah, been at? Fun. I ain't seen Webby in a minute. Boosie been taking all the shine. Where the hell Webby at? Webby on, he crazy as hell. I follow You Webby. follow Webby? Yeah, you, yeah. you see like you follow Webby. I was yeah, like, you follow Webby? Webby my nigga, man. Webby, Webby crazy as hell. I, I did say the other day that Instagram is quite, it hasn't been quite the same since my nigga Boosie been gone. Like, for real. So they really didn't um, reactivate nigga, Boosie play that nigga page. Shit, that nigga, and that's sick because he was hustling, like, real shit. That nigga was hustling off his and fucking And he Instagram. fucked up the bag. Like, he nigga, fumbled the he bag. Fought, he fumbled the fucking bag because that nigga was eating off his shit. Like, the nigga fucking said, like, he made two million dollars off versus since like the fucking pandemic like between versus and posting niggas on his page and shit he had made like two million dollars and fucked it up fumbled on the one yard line fumbled fumbled the bag man 
And that's that shit, crazy. he was just entertaining though. Like the motherfucker, like he was the most ignorantly entertaining motherfucker. Like he was fucking. I never followed him. I only knew when he went viral. That one. Hey, he used shit. to go viral like a motherfucker. That was the thing. Uh, like, in like the times that he week. didn't, that the other shit would be funny as hell. Like he just was crazy, man. I know he's sick. Like I know he's. I'm sure he a hustle, so I'm sure he's trying to figure it out. But like, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be smart at some yeah, point in be time smart. because you got warned a couple of times before they cut your shit off. Uh-huh. So you got to figure out a new way to hustle. You can't tell people to put your pussy on live and get you $1,000 and keep doing that after they say, Boosie, you can't have bitches on live putting their pussy lips on live. That nigga, yeah. That nigga crazy. It hasn't been the same. Free Boosie. Lock Boosie ass up. Fuck Boosie. I, I don't fuck with it. But, hey, it's to each his own. To each his own with Boosie. But, you know. He, he he has an audience and he got to figure out how to, how to, how to get that bread back. Um, I was listening to fucking, uh, Trina the other day. Trina is like, Ben had way worse songs than fucking. Yeah. Look back at it with Mike Killer Mike. That was on my look list. Look back at, listen, Trina came out the game. My neck, saying, my back with Kaya, man. Come on. Like niggas been talking about this my shit. Back. Bro, we can talk about this shit forever. It's amazing. And I'm Trina came out the fucking Pop. out the gate talking about sucking a dick and letting the little bitch straight lick the clit. Like yeah. that's how oh, she bust on the best scene. friends and all type of shit. Fuck your friend, five or six best friends, bitch. You don't know that hoe. She was on her Selena Powell. That was fire. <laughs> <laughs> for about five six best friends bitch you don't know now that shit was hey, so hard that shit been going but also so Tr- Trina came out Trina <laughs> did her fuck me and my friends <laughs> fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck me and my friends Trina hey what? can you come fuck me and my friends if, if you if you if Trina come fuck fuck you and your friends do you care about which order you in what, what to position you in I'm you gotta be first if you ain't first second. you ain't going nah I'm going but I'm definitely going. <laughs> he like, said, "No, I'm going." Yeah, That's I'm going. real. <laughs> second, I'm definitely going. I'm definitely. If I ain't first, I'm definitely trying to go second. And then, like, why the nigga, why the first nigga's going? I'm gonna try to sneak in and get some head and type shit. So at least I get some head first or something. We've done hey, shit like that. Hey, Good times. Not- Hey, listen, I know a lot of niggas who got a lot of stories like that. I've actually met a few women who got some stories like that. I don't have any stories like that. Uh. Hey, yeah, uh, everybody of age and willing, and got smoke. get it. I know a lot of you bitches. I don't think me seeing like my friend fucking somebody makes me horny. I think. But I'm also not a voyeur. I've said that like I'm not really a voyeur like that. Like I, I, I like uh, I like having sex, but I, I'm not. I don't really care about watching it so much. To be completely honest, uh, but. I know a lot of people who have a lot of stories. Listen, we just shouted out, uh, uh, Chris, <laughs> was it last week when you shouted her out? We were talking about train last night. I forget what you oh, call her because I don't want to call her name out. Yeah, KC. you call her KC. Yeah. Why do you call her KC? Cause that's her shit. That's her, uh, one of her, on her Twitter shit. It's CKC. Oh, well. <laughs> no, they're definitely find her now. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't get the first part of it. That's the I know. I'm part. just saying, but they definitely wouldn't have found her with my shit because I yeah, definitely know I Casey. I like, just, I just thought about that. Like, why do you call her Casey? I'm sorry, but she know I'm who we talking Damn, about. Shut up, bitch. Uh, Siri, Siri, you not a part of this? Boo. I ain't lying. That bitch went off on both my phones, and I ain't even <laughs> say nothing about. I said C, not fucking. Oh, you got your shit on the Hey Siri mode. Yeah. Okay, now nah, I turn my shit off, but I'm sure she still be listening to my shit. Yeah, yeah. I gotta press the button and be like, "Hey, how do you spell exponentially?" <laughs> so, and she say that shit. Um, while while we still talking about music and shit, um, so I I got into a conversation about like one hit wonders, but coincidentally, y'all know I always talk about I do hip hop trivia because I love hip hop trivia. But this week's theme is one hit wonders. Well, so you trying to cheat? I don't know. It's a lot of one hit wonders. Yeah, but you are trying to cheat? It's fine. Get some leverage. Hey, uh, I'm not, but I'll go with it. Hey, <laughs> I ain't worried about it. It's a million one hit wonders. I don't know, but I wanted us to talk about like who are like some of your favorite like one hit wonders. Um, well, favorites, just, I don't necessarily have favorites per se, but, um, like, uh, fucking, uh, what was the brother's name? 
Mims, this is why I'm hot. He yep. was trash. I hated that song, but he was a one hit wonder for sure. Why, 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 why you didn't like this is why I'm hot? Cause it was trash. I like this is why I'm hot. He on my list too, but I actually liked the song. The, I beat, just the beat was it. hard, but I hated it. I don't know. I mean, I guess he, I didn't like him. Like, he just, I didn't like, <laughs> him. I didn't like Mims as yeah, a person, I hated my his nigga. Name. Like, yeah, that name was strange. Mims. And it was like an Fuck acronym off. for some bullshit. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was like like mentor mm. internships at McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> secretly, H- like I don't know what the fuck that shit. That shit was weird. That shit, that shit was dumb. I, is a Maria one hit wonder? Nah, a Maria got bops. A Maria got two. Yeah, so she ain't one. That's true. <laughs> I was yeah. like, is a Maria one hit wonder? Because she got why don't we fall in love? And then yeah. she got uh. No, 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 boo. How did that go? It's one thing that got me tripping. It's one thing. And why don't we fall in love and shit? Is that the same song you just said? What did you yeah, say? Yeah, why don't we fall in love is the main. Oh, yeah. That was that shit, boy. One shit, thing. Crisis. What's the biggest hit? That we, I know we can look at the numbers, but based why on our thoughts. Why don't we fall in love? That shit was fire. That was, that yeah. was, I don't, yeah, the other, the other one, the nine, 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 shit, that shit was cool, but it won't like that. It's that one why thing. don't we fall in love? I feel like you are going to hear one thing before you hear why do I fall in love? I don't want to. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Got you. Um, North Carolina's own Sunshine Anderson. How you I fuck with Sunshine Anderson? I had her. She dope. Do you like the song though? I'm actually mentioning a song that I like. What song? Which one was it? She only had one. Uh, Come home late. Nah, it's she had two. She barely be- she- it wasn't a hit. What was the other song? The, um... Damn, what was that shit? Was it a what? hit or was it a we song? We can do there's a lunch, the ending and sometime. a sometime. That shit was fire. I don't think that was a hit, but I'll give hit. it to her. I'll take her off the one hit that for shit that. Was fire. Because like, I think that joint was popular in like North Carolina. Yeah, that shit was. That shit. Was, she's from if here too. If that's but, what you want, it's that. Yeah, I know exactly which joint you. That shit was about. fire. I fuck with that shit. That was my shit. I like Craig that song. Another one. You said what? Craig Mack. Uh, you think of him as a one-hit wonder? I do. He only had flavor in your ear as far as a hit. Not songs we listened to his yeah, album and liked it. Yeah, that's a fact. Because if that's the case, if we only going by if we liked additional songs, then your man Joe probably wouldn't be on the one-hit wonder list. Who, Joe Budden? Yeah. Well, well, he had a couple joints. He had the shit with Tank that 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 charted. You know what I'm saying? Not like high, but it charted. Like he. he I think it. Joe Button is solidified as a one hit wonder. I don't think yeah, anybody man, will sure. argue that Joe Button had hits. Yeah, shit would. Like yeah. he has a following. Like anybody has a following, but I don't think they would label any song that uh Joe Button did after Pump It Up a hit. Yeah, I mean, would I you? No. Nah. I mean, I I I think that she don't put it down like you type shit was hard, but I feel you though. I remember that song. Uh, did they have Marcus Houston too? No, nah, I'm thinking about somebody that's a, else. That's, a, that's another song that Marcus Houston had with Joe Budden on it. Correct. Okay, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Uh, a song and a person. Uh, shout out to PYP. Um. So in college, we had this little crew called PYP, and it was Pretty Young Pimps. And we had this song that we loved, and it was A Party and a Party by Queen Pen. That shit was fire. Party and a Party still goes up for me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> a party ain't a party till it's ran on through, and leave it to my crew. It's going to be fun. Her and Tracy Lee. Tracy Lee had a dope one. And Ooh, I, 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 I go. Went, that shit was fire. Shout out to Tracy Lee. I don't think I heard Tracy Lee name he was on since Queen Tracy Penn song. Lee. He had a Queen a song with Queen Pen that was super dope. Tracy Lee. I'm about to look this nigga up. Tracy, Tracy Lee. Oh, Tracy Lee. He did have braids and shit. Uh, what song did he have? Like, what? Well, at least he got Wikipedia. He collaborated with Biggie. Said changing faces. Y'all ain't mentioning none of the songs we like. Many faces. The thing. What was Tracy Lee's? Uh, what was the song that we like? Cause everywhere that my crew go. What was the name of that uh, song? Party something. Is that the thing? You know oh, it's party down, time. Down, down. That was that shit. Oh, that yeah, that that was dope. I got one for you. Rex and Effects. Oh yeah. Rump Shaker. Yep. 
Yeah, I yeah. never knew they were a one hit wonder. Produced by fucking Pharrell. Rex and Effects? Correct. That wasn't a uh no, Why am was... I putting them with um Teddy Riley? Nope. Teddy Riley. Nope. That was Teddy Riley goes they ghost produced it that. Teddy Riley took the credit for it, but nah, that was their first that oh, was their first place. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, that makes sense then. I, I think I now that you're saying that, I think I, I think I remember something about that. I think we talked about that briefly one time before about uh for real. Uh what other one hits did you have that you that you actually like? Hmm, <laughs> Cuckoo Cow, my projects. And my projects. Hey, shout fire. out to Cuckoo Cow. That was a good song. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh I got Trillville. Some cut. Hey, hold on. I feel like Trillville had more than one song, though. I, I don't like, feel like Trillville. Get on my level. Is, yeah, you're right. They did. They, I don't think level. they get fit on the one hit one. Though. Get on my level, ho. Get on my level. This, you crazy out your head. Get, get on my level is still played everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but I just hate it. Yeah, I don't think Trillville fits, fits, fits the one hit wonder. But I know somebody who does fucking Cali Swag District. Do you know what Cali Swag District sang? Or what was oh, their yeah. song? That was Do My Dougie. That was my Do My Dougie. Teach me how to Dougie. Teach me, teach me how to Dougie. How niggas have like big hits like that and then like nothing? Yeah. Like, well, I see featuring future Rex. Rex was hot. I had Rex. And that's because I heard Rex the other day. And I was fun. like, oh, I forgot Future was on Rex. Yep. That's how I know Future from Rex. I didn't know Future before that. And it's crazy because the nigga name was YC, right? You said YC? Mm hmm. Young Chris. His name was Young Chris. I remember that nigga having a big ass nose in. Yeah, he was a funny looking nigga. He looked like Humpty Hump a little bit mm -hmm. in the face. Whatever happened to that nigga? Uh, is, is Rich he Boy a YC Wonder? Who? Rich Boy. Nah, he had to throw some D's and then he had to join with, um, Carrie, uh, Carrie Hilson. Good things on last forever, baby. Uh, uh, the drive, you crazy. I remember and, Rich yeah, Boy was blowing so up. Like, Rich Boy had like, uh, uh, maybe like six or seven months of a year where it was like all about Rich Boy and then he kind of like went away. He was funny looking too, real talk. Yeah, he did. He, was he didn't have no facial hair. That's always weird. That nigga first album was crazy though. I still play that shit to this day. That, was, that shit crazy. I don't think I've heard it. It's a great album. That was a good. Me and my my that was my wife. One of my wife's favorite albums. That's why I started fucking with her because she's a like mad hip hop and shit. She's a like when I met her, she was playing like um fucking rich boy and shit. I was like, damn, it's hard. Ain't it? and then, hey, that's funny because I, I I I bonded I, I I bonded with somebody romantically over Twista. Like what the fuck? You listening to old Twista and shit like album shit? Like people just don't listen to like oh shit? Like I love Twista. Yeah, for sure. L Twista was like. Cool. T Twister was Twister's Twister still is though. I was listening to Overnight Celebrity and some other shit the other day. Yeah. Um uh with Twister in it. I like when I go down like these music rabbit holes and shit. And then I start listening to some shit and then like shit just spawn from that. And that's exactly that's exactly what happened uh with Twister. Um what you got you got one last one hit one to the the lead and win, then we can we can wrap this up. Uh know your clap, UTP. Hold on, hit that no your clap. How the cadence go with that? Y'all remember? Yeah. Da -da -da. No your clap. Hey, shout out to Skinny. That used to be Skinny song. I, I gave shit Skinny a, a happy birthday shout out. Um, my last, hey, uh, my last one hit wonder. Um, I bet B. I wouldn't even be surprised if you don't even remember this song. Uh, but do you remember she was from DC? She was a female rapper from DC named Nonchalant. Hell yeah, nigga. Five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the, the morning. Nigga, I used to get up at five in the morning to listen to that song. <laughs> no, that's not true, but I used to fucking love Nonchalant. Like, nigga, I used to rap the fuck out. I like, I love, I used to love female rap, dog. Like, I'm cool on that shit now, I like talking about, but yeah, hell yeah, Nonchalant, that shit was fire as a bitch. What you gonna be outside, outside on, the on the corner? You better, you get, better get, your get yourself shit together. together. Get your that shit was fire. Man. I, used to hey, love no, it. I was in shit like I was in Petersburg, like I was doing the summers in like Petersburg, Richmond, and shit. So we used to go to fucking DC and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I, that was hey. my shit. Shout out to people who uh, know DC music and love DC music. Uh, I, I just feel like I, I had a, I had a conversation with a friend uh, from Virginia. 
That's a and, dope rap name too, nonchalant. And we talked about um I asked like why do you think like Virginia didn't blow up at that time? Like when the Neptunes was popping, all all of all of the artists that came out of that uh Timberland camp. Like I feel like Vir- Vir- Norfolk, Virginia Beach, that whole area should have kind of blown up. But it, it more so went to Atlanta. Atlanta blew up. I feel like at, around that same time they had fucking uh Pusha T and uh Clips and uh Neptunes and Neptunes was producing all these beats and all these people and fucking Jodeci and Missy Elliott and all these people came out of that uh that Timberland camp and that Missy camp, like, it should have been bigger. But, like, with D.C., I was just like, I feel like D.C. Ha- has had some starts, but we just can't blow up on the on the music side of things. Yeah. That's why, like, when I go places, like, and they play Go-Go, people be expecting me to be hyped about them playing Go-Go. I'm like, dog, they've been playing the same five Go-Go songs for 30 years. Like, yeah. like, I, I, this is the shit y'all know. Like, so they play it. I get why they play it. But anytime a DJ breaks into like a DC set, it's the same fucking songs. Sardines and pork and beans. It's doing the butt. It's all types of bullshit. No shade. I don't want to call it bullshit because it's good music. I just heard it so much that it doesn't make me excited to hear like go, go outside of DC. But there is, um, if y'all go to Groove ATL, and there are some other DJs that, uh, played a good DC set. Uh, my gosh, uh, Sean Fallon be everywhere. Uh, he is, his name is Sean Fallon on Instagram. He's a good DJ. He like knows music. Like he's from Philly. He's out of Atlanta though, but he played like a dope go-go set. And I was like, I appreciate you playing some shit that I don't hear every time. You know, like when you hear like a reggae set and it's the same fucking reggae songs, that's how it is with Go-Go. They play the same songs over and over again. But, uh, I want you I want to thank y'all for listening, man. Uh, thanks for hearing about our musical choices and one hit wonders and nasty ass songs and things like that. Let us know, uh, how you feel? What, what songs you got? Right, right to us. Make sure y'all subscribe to the show though. Uh, the ain't shit show, uh, dot com. That's an X where the I will be. Y'all can follow us on Twitter, IG, Facebook. Y'all know where we are. Uh, Apple Podcasts, everywhere, Spotify. <laughs> we don't have no exclusive deal, but we on there. And like to end every show with a quote, man. And today's quote is, when a leader walks into the room, the followers feel intimidated. The snakes feel threatened. But the next leaders should feel inspired. And until next time, I want y'all to, oh, we're not recording next week. I staggered uh, the shows purposely. So y'all got part one and two of last week's show, and then y'all should get this one. So that should hold y'all off next week. Uh, it is Labor Day week, weekend, I guess. Um, so don't expect the show. But until we talk after that, I want y'all to manifest y'all destiny, wash y'all hands, arrest the cops that are, um, killed Breonna Taylor, and the marathon continues. Right and we out. Right